I call this uh, September 14th meeting of the Williamson County Commission to order. And at this time, I would like to call on uh, Jeff Mosley to read our uh, declaration or whatever it's called. <laughs> the introductory language for the meeting tonight is follows. Um, with the County Board of Commissioners meeting September 15th, 2020. If there is no objection from the members of the commission and subject to executive order number 60, the County Board of Commissioners has determined that it is necessary that this meeting be held electronically to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the public due to COVID 19. Are there any objections concerning this finding by the commission? And let the minutes reflect the commission has made the determination to conduct this meeting electronically. When roll call is called by the clerk, please acknowledge uh, when your name is called that you can hear other members of the commission. Pursuant to guidance of the state of Tennessee's Comptroller's Office and Executive Order 60, all votes must be taken by roll call. The clerk will call your name at the time you should identify yourself and cast your vote. Prior to making a motion or second or asking a question or making a comment, please state your name so that uh, the clerk can get the appropriate name for the minutes. All votes, again, must be by roll call and the meeting is available to the public on Public Access TV and is streaming live on YouTube. Uh, back to you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, we will have our invocation by Commissioners Beth Lothers and our Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Keith Hudson. Let us pray. Lord, please give us ears to hear, minds to reason, and measured words that will bring about deeper understanding. We humble ourselves before you. We honor the memory of all who have fallen on domestic and foreign soil defending the ideals that have made us these United States. May we honor all who died by living to honor all in our stead. May we honor all who died by refraining from any dishonor of those with whom we disagree. Please protect the health and safety of our first responders and encourage our decision makers at all levels of governance who we entrust to live wisely. Thank you for our blessings and for comfort in our sorrows. In the name of our Lord, amen. Please rise and join me in the pledge to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. At this time, call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello present. Commissioner Allsbrooks. Commissioner Bill. Commissioner Bill present. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard here. Commissioner Shalfont. Commissioner Shalfont here. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert here. Commissioner Hester. Commissioner Hester here. Commissioner Hudson. Commissioner Hudson here. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones present. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Commissioner Ricky Jones here. Commissioner Landrum. Commissioner Lawrence. Commissioner Lawrence present. Commissioner Little. Little here. Little here. All right, Commissioner Lothers. Commissioner Lothers, present. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, present. Commissioner Morton. Commissioner Morton, present. Commissioner Nations. Nations, present. Commissioner Rainey. Commissioner Rainey. Commissioner Smith. Commissioner Smith here. Commissioner Story. Commissioner Story here. Commissioner Sturgeon. Commissioner Sturgeon here. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. 
Commissioner Tunick is present. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb present. Commissioner Williams. Commissioner Williams here. Okay, and I'll go back just one time. Commissioner Osbrooks. Commissioner Landrum. <laughs> Commissioner Rain. Rain is here. All Commissioner right. Landrum is here. All right, thank you, sir. Uh huh. I have 23 present and one absent. Commissioner Osbrooks absent. Thank you. Uh, we have heard Commissioner Osbrooks that said she was not going to be able to make it tonight. Next, we have approval for the minutes. And at this time, we will entertain a motion for approval of the minutes. I move. Second. 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 Okay, whoever moved, you need to please state your name and then make your motion uh, and then state your name for the second. Mr. Lawrence, move for approval. Story second. Thank you. Are there any additions or corrections? Okay, hearing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Uh, we will do the, the minutes as a voice vote, but everything else will be uh, by roll call. Uh, at this time, if you are in favor of approval of the minutes, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? The minutes are approved. Uh, next, we call for citizens' communications because this is an electronic meeting. We need to suspend the rules. So at this time, I would like to ask that we suspend the rules for citizens' communications. We also have two late filed resolutions, resolution 9-20-37 and 9-20-38. Uh, do we have any objections to suspending the rules for citizens' communications and hearing the late files? Please speak now. Hearing none, those will be added to the agenda. Mr. Chairman, and Commissioner just... Smith. Yes, sir. Uh, do we need to approve the minutes of the special call meeting? Uh, the intent was to do them as a whole, but I did not state that. So I'll have to ask the attorney, do we need to go back and do the second one? Yeah, you need to do a motion and second on the August 24th meeting, not having included it explicitly in the first motion. Okay, at this time, we will entertain a motion for the meeting minutes of the uh, August 24th special session. Mr. Smith, move for approval. Commissioner Jones, I second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any additions or corrections to the special call meeting? Hearing none, I assume you're ready to vote. If you're in favor of the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, those minutes are passed. Now, as we get into our meeting, we will be using the chat feature. So please open the chat on the, hit the chat button on the bottom of your screen. I believe that's where it is. Uh, if you re wish to speak to a resolution, Diane will be typing the the or somebody will be typing the resolution number in, and you just need to type with your name, request to speak or like to speak or somehow to let us know. Uh, type that in, and we will call on you in order. Uh, but the only way I can keep up with it is if we see it in the chat. So please, if you wish to speak to a resolution, uh, please signify by putting it into the chat. Uh, we also need to know, did everyone receive the email from Jamie that had the two attachments about the bond resolutions? Did anyone not receive that email today and have those attachments? Hearing none, so I assume everybody got it. Uh, I believe that is all of my communications and messages. At this time, we will go to the county mayor for his report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and welcome all the county commission. Uh, we have two lengthy reports that we will have 
uh, tonight. One of them is the update uh, of our um, program that started over two years ago. Uh, we refer to it as the JJJ Task Force, the judges, the juvenile, and the jails. We will have that report. You should have that report that was mailed out or emailed out to you. We will discuss it first. After this is finished, uh, Jim, uh, Jim uh, will ha be handling uh, the work on that, Jim Cross. But, but, and then after that is finished, we will be discussing the uh, special task force under the oversight of Matt Large and dealing with the Confederate flag. So before we get into our uh, two um, reports, Nina is not able to be with us tonight, but Phoebe, I hope is on there. I have not seen her. Uh, Phoebe, if you're on there, would you kind of give a snapshot of the financial conditions of the counties and a couple of things that you need to mention so that we uh, spread them across the minutes? Phoebe? Thank you, Mary Anderson. The first thing I'd like to address is if you would check your packet, refer to your packet. We have included both budget reports for the months of June as well as July. We have included June. Um, I know Nina had provided you with those reports back in the July commission meeting, but we did have a few funds that did not have the totals at that time due to the year in closing process. So you will find in your packet both the budget report for the current um, for this prior July 31st, as well as June 30. The next thing, if you would please draw your attention to the privilege tax report. For the month of July, we have had monthly total collections of $1,289,117. This is for July 2020. For the year July 2019, we had total monthly collections of 1,300,000 and 142,000. Um, it's only actually a difference of about $11,000, a little more. So all in all, we have been watching the privilege tax numbers as well as the education impact fee numbers. And you can see here, um, even with the economic condition as it is, we are very happy to see that the numbers have only dropped very, dropped very slightly in the last year compared to both July of 19 and 20. For the month of July 2020, education impact, we have had net collections of 1,861,424,000. This too is very close to the numbers that we received in 2019. The collections back have dropped only about 25,000, a little over 25,000 um, in the last year. Again, we keep a close eye on both of those numbers um, as the total available for education impact right now, total available for allocation is in fact $23,273,609. Also included in your packet, you will find the profit, consolidated profit and loss statements. This is for the Cool Springs Conference Center for both periods ending 6-30-2020 as well as July 31-2020. We have also included a snapshot, a spreadsheet illustrating the county's portion of profit and loss over the last 15 years. So you will see that spreadsheet and you can kind of gauge where we're at and see how we have compared to the, to the, to the last 15 years. Um, all in all, I know we have a, a loss this month in July. We did receive a loss. The county's portion of that loss was 15269 But again, compared to previous years for the month of July, um, that, is, that is actually a, a little better, actually, than, than what we had received in the loss that we had sustained last year this time. Moving forward to your packet, there are three letters from the crop trailer. You will find three different memos from Nina addressed to you, each addressing a different situation. Each one of these will need to be recorded in the minutes. 
as these are requirements by the comptroller's office. The first one I would like to go to through is you should find its annual budget approval letter from the state of Tennessee, as well as the annual tax anticipation note approval letter. Again, it is a requirement of not only the comptroller's office and state and local finance, but also in order for the county to maintain its three-star program. It is a requirement for the three-star program to provide a copy to the county commission of the approval letter from the state, as well as also you will see included in that documentation is the debt service policy. Um, that debt policy is also a requirement. We, we keep that on our website for you to find at any time. But again, this is the packet that we provided to state and local finance as part of our three-star program. And we are required to submit this to you at, at this time um, to be included in the minutes and recorded as part of this meeting. The next memo I'd like for you to take a look at, please, is referred to as CT0253 form. These forms are required um, by local finance to submit to the commission as well. This is summarizes the debt transactions that we have recently had. There are three CT forms that you will find. The first CT form is for the General Obligation School Bonds Series 2020A. These were sold on July the 29th, 2020, and we closed on this bond sale in August, on August 20. So the first one that you will find is for the General Obligation School Bonds. We did receive an interest rate of 1.48. And included in the CT form, you will see a breakdown of those interest payments and what those interest payments are due based on each year. The second CT form that you will also find included in this documentation is for the County District School Bonds 2020A. This was for 32 million. And we received, again, under a 2% interest rate this interest rate was 1.45. And finally, the last CT form that you will find attached in this packet would be for school debt lease. So this is for a school Dell capital lease purchase agreement. This is for Dell computers for the education system. Because capital leases are considered a debt service, and because the county carries the debt for both the county and the school, the purchase agreements are reflected on the financial statements of the county. And therefore, we must, for, we must also include this on our end of the year financial statements. And you will find included again a CT form for that. Now, this is the schools pay the principal and interest on these list payments. Um, but again, it is just a requirement because we do carry the debt for the county that these are shown on the county financial report. Finally, the last packet or the last memo, I'm sorry, that you will receive or you will look at um, is, is quite lengthy. It is a little bit thicker. Um, this one is the refunding bonds. This is also will be what we the documentation that is referenced in resolution coming up this evening nine resolution 926 and 927 the tennessee comptroller's office is required to issue a report prior to the approval of any refunding resolution therefore this has, is being presented to you now um, prior to the resolutions that you will find and you will hear later in the evening we are also required to issue a report for each refunding resolution, which is why you will find two, again, why it is so lengthy. The first refunding will be for 14.2 million for county district refunding. And then the second issuing 
issuance is for estimated to be about 61,750,000. As you read through the documentation, you will find that on the refunding for the county district school bonds, we are estimating a savings because of the refunding, a savings of $1,139,800 roughly. Uh, of course, that is assuming an interest rate of 1.75 for the general obligation bonds. Based on this refunding, which you will hear later this evening, we are estimating savings of $5,169,533. Again, that is assuming an interest rate of 1.75. Um, we are, the letters that we receive from the comptroller's office only allow us a 90 day window. So basically they approve the refunding for 90 days. So that's why if for some reason the, the market changes and we are not able to receive the better rate of less than two, which we are hoping for here and we anticipate, then it is very possible if we do not proceed with this resolution um, and the refunding that you may see this letter again. And that is why it is typically, it is good for 90 days the window for for allowing us that refunding but of course we were going to watch that that market and if that rate goes up above two percent then we may hold off again and, and issue and do a refunding um, at a different time is there any other questions or anything that i can try to help with on those Chairman Little, this, uh, yeah, okay. yeah, I finally got unmuted. Uh, the chair accepts these documents into the record and calls on Commissioner Story for a question. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for the explanation. Can, can I get an update on the, um, I know months ago we had a, uh, the educational impact fee um, ruling come down and then I, I guess maybe what's the next step and what's the next milestone that we need to be looking at before, you know, we can look at the rest of the funds potentially. Yeah, this is uh, Jeff Mosley and we, um, the Home Builders Association and the plaintiffs filed a request or an application for permission to appeal with the Supreme Court. We filed an opposition to that request for uh, the ability to, to appeal it to the Supreme Court. It sits with the Supreme Court right now. We are awaiting their order on the application. If they deny the application, it's over. We will have a final judgment. If they grant the application, then we will have to argue it in front of the Supreme Court. We'll have a couple of months where we'll have briefing and responses, and then we'll have it docketed and have to argue it in front of the Supreme Court and wait for their ruling. Um, it's been, I believe, five or six months, about four or five months maybe since we got the original ruling. So um, we're hoping for a, a decision on the application any day. Every Monday they put out their certifications for appeal or, de or denials. Um, so I checked it this, after, this evening at six o'clock. There was no decision on it as of this week. So we'll wait till next Monday and see if we get something then. Outstanding. Thank you all. Mr. Chairman, this is Rogers Anderson. If there are no questions directly directed to Phoebe, thank you, Phoebe, for um, the report. And before I turn it over to Jim Cross with oversight, yeah. let me report. Hang on, I've, we've got one more. We have one more. Mayor, we have one more question I see from Commissioner Lawrence on the privilege tax. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hi, Phoebe. Thank you for pinch hitting tonight for Nina. I just had a question about the privilege tax. Uh, the chart that we got shows the the numbers look like they're significantly down for March, April, May, which is in June, which is understandable given that our hotels are half full to maybe a third full of what they normally are this time of year. So um, the numbers you gave were kind of surprising. Um, I'm just wondering, do we have any concerns going forward for the next fiscal year? Will we be able to keep that up? Or how are we making up the difference between the hotel losses and some of the other losses that we normally bring in on the privilege tax re revenue right now? Do 
the privilege tax, um, and overall, we are we are down compared. We have projected out that we are going to be, you know, slightly different each month. But again, this month in July, we actually finished across the board. Um, now that is total. The number I gave is total for the month collection for not just schools. It is includes recreation, fire, schools, and adequate schools privilege tax in that number. So that may be why it it also looks a little bit different. Um, but overall, we're we're staying steady. But we I know Nina is continues to monitor those um, and try to adjust. We do not take any of those funds out of that privilege tax money for any projects um, unless we have commission approval for each individual project. So, you know, you will know monthly, she will continue to update you monthly um, where we stand. And of course, then we will not pull those funds from that reserve balance for any of those privilege tax if we see that that is going down drastically different. And as a point of order, the hotel motel tax goes into the general budget and it is not part of the privilege tax. That is correct. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Before I turn it over to Jim Cross, for you that do not know, uh, during the rain yesterday, we uh, sustained severe damage at our Nolensville Recreation Complex. Um, it was more damage done yesterday than the flood of 2010. We had water standing approximately two feet uh, in our entire complex. So um, as you read about that, we're doing an assessment now, Kevin, uh, Benson went out today, uh, Wayne Franklin's involved, but it'll be shut down indefinite while we uh, remove the floor, the gym floor, and many other things out there uh, because of the flood. Many of you might also know that, well, particularly Tommy and Beth, that we were also planning on holding the election out at our uh, recreation uh, facility, which we do throughout the county. And of course, that has been changed uh, today. Um, it will be going to the city hall for voting. So as you um, are talking to people out in that area, let them know that the rec center is not a site uh, for election voting this year. That has been transferred over to city hall. And thanks to Chad for jumping on that. And thanks to the team for getting out there yesterday and today. Uh, we've it's quite a bit of damage we don't know at this point so with that being said in your pot in your packet uh, you should have a report on the front side of it says genuine integrity and that report is put together by Gresham Smith and Pulser and Bogard and the justice facility design let me give you a little snapshot on this while we're bringing it to you tonight. There is no action required. We do ask for your engagement by asking questions. About two years ago, um, we started on a journey through a task force called the JJJ Task Force that lo was looking at our jails, our juvenile and our justice center. And out of that report, I mean, out of that task force, we had representatives, judges, the juvenile side, the jail side, um, many concerned uh, people that we had assigned to that committee to look at what our system looks like 25 years out, 20 and 25 years out. You were so kind to put some money on the budget line that we were it was well over most of our heads for what we were attempting to do. And so we engaged the services through a bidding process for a master planner. And about that same time, we also, um, thanks to you guys, uh, authorized us having an owner's representative. Gresham Smith was hired as our a master planner with these other team members they brought on board to look at all aspects of our juvenile, excuse me, of our justice system. Jim, Jim Cross was hired with oversight to oversee that entire project 
And tonight you're seeing the rollout of that project and how that is going to look over the a period of the next four to six years. How we're going to fund it is all the pieces of that haven't been put, put together, but you're going to see the report tonight. And for those that are listening or watching, there'll be slide presentation. I hope everyone can see this on YouTube. I want to say thanks to the Matt, uh, Gresham and Smith, uh, Smith for all their hard work and to Jim for jumping in there and, uh, and as he carries the banner. Jim, you want to do some introductions and get us started? And I know, I know uh, Jeff is getting ready to crank it up. Uh, thanks, Mayor Anderson, and uh, good after good evening, everyone. Appreciate your time tonight. This is um, a big project, and this is somewhat of a lengthy report. So I'm going to get Jeff uh, Coonan and Curtis Pulitzer, uh, who did this report. It's their it's their work product, and so I'd like for them to present that at the end. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the implementation process and kind of what steps are next. So. Uh, just to go ahead and kick this off, Jeff, I think you're going to uh, make the presentation. So if you get started, I'd appreciate it. All right. Hopefully everybody can hear me and, and see my screen. Somebody, somebody give me a thumbs up if you can see the screen. All right. Excellent. Uh, let me move Mr. Pulitzer's picture off of it, though, so we can see our lovely graphics. Okay, uh, as as uh, was just said by uh, the mayor and and Jim Cross, uh, my name is Jeff Coonan. I am an architect with Gresham Smith, based in Nashville. I'm one of the voices that you'll hear uh, for uh, tonight giving this report. The other voice that you'll hear is our associate uh, planning consultant, uh, Curtis Pulitzer. And uh, together, we're going to give you as as brief uh, but pertinent an overview of the program that we've been through in developing this master plan over the last two years as we can in the time that we have. So, here we go. All right, so the general scope of this study is a 25-year needs assessment, uh, as, as the mayor said. It looked at county courthouses, adult jail, sheriff's offices, and other associated facilities, juvenile courts and services, and detention. Uh, the team that looked at that, led by Gresham Smith, uh, included Pulitzer Bogart and Associates, Justice Fil Facilities Design, uh, Bell and Associates Construction. Uh, before I go on, I want to take just a minute to um, offer my thank or my uh, appreciation uh, for all of the stakeholders uh, from the various user groups who engaged with us in this process, uh, their professionalism and dedication and passion for what they do was evident in every single conversation that we had. And uh, this, this report really is uh, all about how we best accommodate their needs moving forward. So very quickly here, I'd like to orient you to the location of the facilities that we're talking about. So we have a map here. You see I-65 on the right-hand side, Highway 98 is a landmark. Uh, downtown Franklin with the Williamson County Courthouses and south on Columbia Avenue uh, in, in what we'll call uh, uh, the Century Court Complex, uh, the Williamson County Adult Jail, Juvenile Services, Courts, and Sheriff's Office. Moving a little bit closer in, you see Columbia Avenue again on the right for reference, Beasley Drive, Century Court rounding horizontally. And in the green box here, you see uh, all of the facilities uh, that we're uh, uh, studying with regards to juvenile, uh, sheriff's office and adult jail, as well as some other buildings that are uh, county owned buildings in, in the vicinity. Downtown Franklin, uh, you see 3rd Avenue, 4th Avenue, Main Street, Circle, the roundabout um, in, the, in the center of downtown. You see the historic courthouse and its annex and the judicial center that fronts 4th Avenue but is connected back to the historic courthouse. These are the facilities that we are primarily interested in and the operations that they contain. 
recap of the process. Process began about January 2019 uh, for part one, extended through July of 2019. Uh, wherein we conducted a facilities operational and physical plant assessment. We developed forecasts based on demographics and uh, our understanding of the current operations of the facilities and developed a list of recommendations uh, uh, that would underpin the planning going forward. Part two extended from August of 2019 through July of 2020, uh, just concluded a couple of months ago. Uh, but in this, in this part of the process, we developed operating principles, macro space programming. So that is large scale department scale space planning uh, for the different user groups. Uh, and then we also explored some site and functional diagrams to understand how the program would fit on real estate that the county currently owns. Uh, we developed an understanding of likely capital costs, operational costs over time, and then developed an implementation timeline. So getting started with uh, the review of this uh, master plan, I think uh, even though we, we developed a lot of information uh, based on the changes that are currently underway in the county over the last several years, there is one overriding theme that underpins all of that, and that is uh, Williamson County is in the center of a very successful region in Tennessee. Williamson County is experiencing significant growth over the 25 year planning horizon. And so is the entire Middle Tennessee region. So in one way or another, it's key to understand that most of what we're talking about is driven by the growth in the county fundamentally. Uh, how that growth affects the different components might be very different depending on another, a number of other factors within that. But fundamentally, at the end of the day, substantial growth means a substantial need. So I'm going to turn this over to uh, Curtis to start to review for you our assessments, key findings, and walk through some details about each of the components of the master plan. Curtis. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Um, Mayor Anderson, members of the commission, guests who are watching uh, this presentation tonight. Uh, I also want to echo uh, uh, Jeff's uh, comments earlier and thank all the stakeholders involved in this project, the Public Building Authority, the Steering Committee, and most importantly, all the users who are so dedicated to working with us and for their leadership on this project and for also Mary Anderson's leadership. So uh, again, we thank you and this was a very complex project as Jeff explained. Well, we do master planning projects like this all across the country. Uh, rarely do we have all elements of the justice system involved and or in one master plan effort. So it was quite an undertaking, but we were very honored to have been part of it and we're very proud of the work we've done so far. So just to summarize what the key findings are and then we'll go into the details of it. Uh, first and foremost, the facilities at Century Court, which Jeff just showed you on the aerial, uh, are woefully uh, undersized and no longer viable or functional. Uh, they were built in a different era and uh, they will not meet future future growth needs as Jeff explained. Uh, the highest priority of all the components that we've looked at is juvenile services. Uh, they must have a new facility uh, not only to comply with state standards, which do not allow them to be on this and co-located in the same building as a jail, but to meet contemporary standards and most importantly, the projected growth, which we'll see in a few minutes. The adult jail also was designed in another area. It's, it's outlived its useful life. It's not staff efficient. And again, coupled with projected growth, uh, the building has outlived its uh, useful life in terms of the physical plant. And so uh, to provide for a more efficient jail, meeting contemporary practices, it too will be replaced, but in phases, as it's just, and you'll hear from uh, Jeff later explain that. Uh, the sheriff's office has also outgrown its original location uh, at Century Court. They're right now, they're fragmented across four different locations across the county and with increasing demands for services. Uh, and again, reflecting the continuing county growth, uh, they really do require a consolidated new headquarters to operate efficiently and provide public, pro uh, proper public uh, protection. Uh, they're doing a great job right now, but they really will, could do even better with a new facility. Uh, the courtrooms are slightly different. Uh, the demand for additional courtrooms is there. Uh, courthouse security needs to be improved. 
uh, how we use the historic courthouse, we'll explain a bit later, uh, needs to be incorporated, um, and so that will allow the court, the course operation to stay in its current location, not a new building. Some expansion will be necessary over time, but it's a different situation from juvenile services, the jail, or the sheriff's office. So we'll go through each of the components. Uh, the first one is the juvenile justice center. Um, as Jeff explained, you know, we did an operational assessment and uh, at the same time, Gresham and their engineers did a physical plan assessment. And again, the key findings there was that the uh, juvenile courts and juvenile services are housed in a woefully inadequate facility. They're right now a part of the Century Court building. That space was never designed as a juvenile facility and they've way outgrown that space many, many times over. Um, the important point to mention, point two, the ability to properly serve all youth and families is really compromised there. And it's really important to understand what, what they do. Um, juvenile services serves all children of all ages in Williamson County. Uh, in addition to the youth are in crisis and may have gotten into trouble, they see every single child in foster care. The sensitivity of these cases is very important or for making lasting impacts on young people. And the current space is not only insufficient square footage wise, but also fails to provide an age appropriate child friendly and trusting building to comply with the best practices. Uh, young people need and their families need to receive much needed services that Judge Guffey and their, her dedicated staff uh, provide the county and the space they currently occupy does not do that at all. So what's part of, in addition to, you know, people think what's in juvenile services? Well, it's complex. We have the courts. We have juvenile court clerk. Again, insufficient space for staff. They're operating out of every nook and cranny and closets. Juvenile services, which is the largest component, insufficient workspace. Again, they are operating literally from closet space. They're using conference rooms as, as they're using, you know, office files area as office space. It's just impossible for them to properly perform their work. Um, as I said earlier, the co-location with the adult jail is a violation of current statutes. Uh, the juvenile detention center does not represent best practices. You cannot build a facility like that today. And uh, the alternative learning center, which is a middle and high school, is not part of Williamson County schools, and it lacks parity with all the other schools in the county uh, of that nature. So to give you a snapshot of what the growth dynamics look like, uh, we broke it down into some key statistics. Uh, the juvenile court average daily court events uh, last year was 83. It's projected to grow in 25 years to 169, more than double. Juvenile services caseload, and that includes the YSOs, probation staff, all the staff that deal with the kids in need, uh, is going to experience a growth from 5,100 cases a year to 28,000 cases a year. Uh, the juvenile detention population is relatively small, um, and thanks to the, the efforts of Judge Guffey and, and the magistrates, but they average about 4.1 kids. Last year, it's projected to grow to about 21.8. Uh, the detention capacity is actually 12, and we're projecting an expansion to 24 beds and possibly 40 beds. It isn't also, the detention facility also does serve as presently some of your adjacent counties. Um, a respite center is something new, which doesn't exist, and I'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, and that has a tenant capacity for 10 beds in the future. And the alternative learning center, which is the school, presently uh, has 80 seats and they need 150 to 200. Again, they serve the entire county. There's only one ALC, alternative learning center, for the entire Williamson County. So what are the main planning objectives? Again, meeting the future needs of youth and families engaged with the legal justice system. You know, this I can't emphasize enough that this the juvenile services folks really are the core. They serve and in, sort of unseen sometimes, unless your kids get in trouble, all kids within the county. Uh, we must comply with state statutes, contemporary best practices. Uh, again, we have to separate the juvenile uh, functions from the jail. And we're going to provide some new services that have never existed before, but are needed in this complex world that we are living in today. And the two things that are really new and very special, one is an assessment center, which is a new concept. It's a service hub with a wraparound services to connect all juveniles in need of services. So any juvenile coming into the facility, their first stop will be an assessment center and evaluation determining what their needs are and what the next steps are in, the pro in their progress. 
whether they might go into the respite center, which is the next bullet point. Uh, the respite center will be a new concept. It's a staff secure facility for youth in trouble. Um, youth may be status offenders. They may be children who cannot be at home. Uh, right now, there is no place for them, uh, a, a sheltered place for them in the county. Uh, they are in contact with the, you know, with the, obviously with the, the staff that work at the juvenile services operation. But this will be a major, major boon to the county to have that respite center. In addition, uh, the juvenile courts. Uh, right now, they have two courtrooms. They need to expand to six. The juvenile court clerk needs better space, more space, and proper interactive space with the public. Juvenile services, as I said earlier, their caseload is growing dramatically. And they need a proper work environment and again, with a 400% increase in caseload. Juvenile detention, I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, we want to change the paradigm, how they operate, uh, direct supervision management, which is where staff or inside the living areas where the juveniles are housed is mandated now by federal statute. The Prison Rape Elimination Act requires uh, juveniles to have direct supervision with staff present at all times. And the ALC, the Alter Alternative Learning Center, again, we want that comparable in terms of program and resources to all the other Williamson County schools. Next. Curtis, do you want to touch on the square footage in the bottom right? Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Jeff. So, uh, to give you an example how woefully inadequate that sp their space is, presently they occupy 20,700 gross square feet, and the projected need is 140,200, so nearly more than six times larger. Of that 140,200, it's important to point out that 38,000 uh, is the alternative learning center, so a large sec component of that 140 is the school. Next. So moving on to the jail. Again, it's the same process of uh, different issues there, obviously. Um, so the jail also is built on a different era, does not conform to contemporary best practices. Uh, the housing units are very small, their staff in, 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 inefficient. It's very intensive to operate because staff have to be uh, es escort inmates throughout the jail. Current facilities have all the services decentralized. So um, we're looking at a much more efficient solution long term. Um, there is most importantly, there is no appropriate housing for medically sick inmates and mentally ill inmates. Uh, unfortunately, our jails have become repositories of uh, individuals with serious mental illness. Uh, it's a sad phenomenon around the country, but it's true everywhere we go. We want to try and divert as many of these folks from the jail, but they do wind up in the jail. And right now, there is no specially designed space or staff for this population. Uh, they do the best they can. I will say Mr. Dobbins does a superb job there. Um, the current facility layout, as I said earlier, requires escorting everywhere, and there's very little space now for programs and services uh, to help uh, inmates that are in the jail to re-enter back into the community. Again, looking at uh, the numbers, uh, we had, uh, uh, he's on the phone with us tonight, Dr. Patrick Jablonski, who lives in Williamson County, is a uh, our, our statistician, but he's also nationally renowned and does a lot of projection work for us around the country. Um, he did all the statistics working with uh, Mr. Dobbins and Mr. Dobbins staff, and uh, the current rate of capacity of the jail is 454 beds. The average daily population was 370 last year. So the average daily population is an average of all the highs and lows. If you look down below, you will see it. I won't, you know, there's, there's a peaking factor of 12%. What that means is on a daily basis, the jail population can fluctuate up and down as much as 12%. Also, jails should be operating at around 80 to 85% of the capacity. So right now, you're doing okay, but in the future, the projected capacity is 761 beds in 25 years, and the average daily population will be 624. So it's still a pretty significant increase in growth uh, of the jail of the jail of the jail uh, facilities. So the main planning objectives here, again, uh, we want to create an operational paradigm change. We work very closely with Mike and his staff, and uh, we want, again, have direct supervision, which is the way contemporary jails are operated, where staff are inside housing units, managing the offender population. Um, and also, again, back to Prison Rape Elimination Act, uh, you almost have to do that to meet those federal guidelines, and uh, regulations, rather. Uh, also, expectation of normal adult behavior. Um, again, jails that were built back in the 70s and 80s were, you know, lock them up, throw away the key. You know, basically the officers were in control stations, and that's not the way current facilities are operated today. 
we want to create new staffing efficiency, minimizing inmate movement, uh, bringing the services and staff to the inmates so we don't have to move them anymore. Uh, we want to focus on diversion and pretrial services. We've worked with the courts. They want to, if we get a new facility where we have the space, to start looking at pretrial services where everybody coming in will be interviewed and assessed and see if they could be diverted out of the jail to try and keep the jail population down. That's again a common practice you see we see throughout the country, including our neighboring counties in Tennessee. Uh, but very importantly, the focus on medical and mental health. Uh, 102 beds for mental health and uh, 56 beds for, for medical. Again, those are beds you don't have today. And it also expand opportunities for reentry. About 40 percent of the population in the jail uh, come from uh, Williamson County. Uh, they'll be returning to Williamson County. So we want to provide them opportunities when they return to the community that they do not come back and recidivate. On the square footage here, uh, we're looking at a current uh, facility square footage of about 109,000, growing to 335,600, again, in phases over time, about three times larger. The Sheriff's Office, um, the first, again, we did the operational assessment for them. Uh, I guess I said earlier, they've outgrown the Century Court location and they've repurposed other functions uh, throughout the county. They're in the Crown Courthouse and the Judicial Center, rather. They're in the Public Safety Building and they're in other locations and, and throughout, the, uh, throughout the county uh, and they need to be consolidated. Uh, the seven divisions operate from four locations, as I just said, and it helps, it's fragmenting the executive and command function. They really need to be streamlined and be located in one location uh, to increase productivity and communication. And they're sorely lacking. The evidence uh, facilities are terrible right now for the sheriff's office, as is the armory and the gun range uh, in, in terms of lacking proper security and, again, not complying with contemporary practices for, for those functions. Uh, the law enforcement stats are driven, again, a lot by county population growth. Uh, just in the last five years, 10.6% growth. The county population, as Jeff said earlier, is going to grow at 54.7% uh, by 2044. The crime rate is increasing, uh, not rapidly, but it has gone up since 2019. And the arrest rate is 15.5% higher than 2015. So the dynamics of growth in the county is natural. These numbers would be going higher, and they demand uh, better facilities to be able to provide proper law enforcement and protection for the public in Williamson County. So the main plan, <clears throat> the main planning objectives here, again, as I said earlier, a consolidated headquarters decreasing from four to two locations. So we'd have a new headquarters and the balance would be at the courthouse, like courthouse security, some of the warrants division that relates to the court's operation uh, logically belong in the courthouse. Six of the seven divisions are now will be in a single location. Uh, we would create a more sensitive environment for victims and witnesses. Uh, again, we want to be able to have detectives bring witness and witnesses in in a very safe and secure environment to the facilities. They don't presently have that ability today. Uh, we want to provide contemporary evidence storage and processing as well as an armory that meets contemporary design and the gun range improve safety and expansion. They need to grow. But I will say here, we are looking at the possibility of a potentially shared gun range with the city of Franklin as their gun range uh, operates uh, adjacent across the road from Century Court. And uh, there may be some opportunities to uh, to share, but we're, we're not up to that yet. The square footage here uh, is not as dramatically different um, 62,152 today, and that's at all four locations to 109,400 in two locations in the future. Uh, last is the courts. Uh, again, we did the operational assessment there. Uh, the existing courtrooms are really too small, even to support the current court schedules, let alone the future needs. Uh, there is, again, here is insufficient space for victims and witnesses to stage and conference with their counsel. Uh, they, it's happening out in corridors, and that's not the way contemporary courthouses are built and designed today. Um, we have some issues with security and separation with the general sessions office areas. You know, in a courthouse, you need to maintain separate circulation for the public, for the judicial, to judiciary and their staff, and the inmate population, and some of that is compromised at the current the judicial center. Uh, there's insufficient space for some some staff, like the law clerks. They're working out in corridor space. Uh, they've just adopted corridors and become their workspace. And the current configuration of the courthouse entrances uh, are complicated because we have uh, the main entrance, which was designed before 9/11. So the entrance is very 
uh, difficult and backs up often backs up in the judicial, judicial center. And when the old courthouse, the, the historic courthouse rather is in operation, we need to provide a second position and staff that. So in the future, we want to create one consolidated security entrance for the entire complex. Again, that would be a staff saying. Um, you can see the dynamics here. Um, we have on the left side of filings and on the right side of the actual hearings. So you can see the tremendous growth in filings um, over the next 25 years, a 40% increase in criminals for general sessions, a 28% increase for circuit criminal, but in the general session civil, a 66% increase. And a lot of that is driven by the success of Williamson County being a new corporate growth hub for the metro area and attracting from around the country because it's, it's a great place to live and and have corporate offices. So the number of civil cases are going to be rising dramatically. Same thing for circuit civil and chancery. And the hearing increases again range from about 26, uh, 6, 22 percent to 30 percent. But again, across the board, an increase by the next in the next 25 years. And again, the main planning objectives for the courts, uh, again, the population growth will demand an increase in courtrooms from the four present to 10 courtrooms in 2025. Uh, again, we want to improve circulation within the courthouse and keep that separation clear between the public, the judges and the inmate population. Um, natural light in courtrooms is something we always have now in courtrooms. Uh, one of the courts does have some natural light, but the others do not. And uh, we want to provide a, a better environment for both the public, uh, witnesses, as well as the juries that show up in court and, and this, obviously the staff that work there. Um, we need a more secure judicial parking, um, as well as general parking, which we know is a huge, a huge issue downtown. And that's another whole conversation, but we do look at the parking needs. Uh, we need to improve security screening, as I mentioned earlier, create a consolidated single screening point. Um, we need to have a, a secure vehicle sally port. That's where the inmates are brought in by van from the jail. It's not that it's not secure, but it is open to the sky and we really need to enclose it to maintain proper security. Uh, the circulation within, between the two courthouses is really not successful right now. They built a connector. It's only for staff and, and the judiciary. The public really can't connect from one point to the other. So we want to, our plan would be to create a proper circulation connectivity between the two buildings. Uh, we need to increase elevator access. There's only one presently. And we also need to provide those discrete places for attorney clients to meet. And the courthouse growth would be from the 59,000 plus to 116,500, um, a little bit less than double the size over the next 25 years. I think that's my part. Sorry for speaking yes. so quickly, but we're trying to do this fast. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It, it is a, a lot of information to consume, um, and this this really kind of only scratches the surface. Uh, so I'm going to move on now and talk about uh, how the master plan might be manifest in physical space. What are the potential costs that might derive from that, and then what does an implement implementation program look like? So as I mentioned before, one of the um, requirements. Uh, provided to us uh, as part of this study was to focus on utilizing real estate and facilities that the county already owns. So to some degree, the decisions, the choices that you see here represented in the master plan uh, are influenced uh, by that particular parameter. Um, if, if there are opportunities to look at other options, then uh, some choices might be reevaluated, but nevertheless, it's useful to understand how the different pieces might fit together and what their general scale might be. So we're still uh, looking at the Century Court campus, uh, which in this case is now extending around to the north and east uh, to encompass some of the real estate that is owned by the county on Beasley Drive. First component that we talked about uh, juvenile courts and services and detention now housed in a new 140,000 square foot two level juvenile justice center uh, that includes the alternative learning center, uh, which is operated by Williamson County Schools and contains about 37,000 gross square feet of space. Uh, the adult jail is uh, totals about 335,000 square feet of space, as Curtis said but would be implemented over 
uh, a period of time via three phases. Basically what we have to do with this facility is build the new facility around the existing facility while it's still in operation, uh, but ultimately enabling us to completely demolish the old facility. Um, really, in order to become functional, the first two uh, phases of that construction are uh, necessary to be undertaken sooner in our timeline. A third phase could follow on uh, later and, and may, may find itself uh, implemented uh, towards the end of the timeline, depending on how uh, demographics change over the next 25 years. The blue components that you see uh, are the areas related to the Sheriff's Office. So you see the Sheriff's Administrative Office building, about 66,800 square feet uh, on the left-hand side of your screen. On the upper left, you see, you see a Sheriff's Special Operations Facility, uh, which contains impound vehicles, uh, helicopters, other equipment, uh, and then a small blue shape there on the top behind the adult jail is an expanded gun range for the sheriff. So these are these are all of the components here associated with what is currently housed at the Century Court Complex, reimagined to spread across the real estate the county owns in that area. I want to draw your attention just very briefly. Um, for other purposes in the meeting, I understand we have located a building that is uh, uh, under consideration for resolution number 9-20-2. It is uh, directly adjacent to the rest of this campus. Moving downtown, the courts facilities, uh, you see 3rd Avenue at the top of the screen, excuse me, 3rd Avenue at the top of the screen, the historic courthouse and its annex adjacent to the square, 4th Avenue at the bottom of the screen, and the judicial center there. Uh, much of the expansion that Curtis mentioned in, uh, in, in his portion of this program uh, is actually uh, contained within the existing courthouse and its annex. So there's a substantial amount of square footage uh, facility there that is underutilized or utilized for other purposes. And we think that uh, quite a bit of the near-term growth for the facilities could be accommodated within uh, those already existing core and shell spaces. Towards the end of the planning horizon uh, timeline, we are showing an expansion to the west here, noted as expansion, it's a three-level expansion, a ground level with some uh, space for detainees and secure judges parking uh, or judicial staff parking and then two levels of courts above that. So four total additional courts there. Here's an overview of the cost comparison. So horizontally you see the various components here, the structure, activity, the juvenile, jail, sheriff's office and courts. Uh, these were compiled for us from um, Bell and Associates, uh, they have, uh, they are located in Williamson County and uh, have extensive experience in uh, corrections and judicial facilities. Uh, so they have utilized their library of current projects uh, to understand what the likely costs might be for each of these components. Three columns that you see, construction cost, total capital budget, which includes costs for uh, fees, contingencies, and fi uh, furniture, fixtures, and equipment. And then on the last column, you see a projected uh, FY25 operating budget. Um, the totals here, I think it's important to understand that um, these do not come all in one big bite. They are spread out over an implementation timeline. Uh, and also certainly involve decisions by the county with regard to what to move ahead with uh, sooner, what to move ahead with later, uh, and uh, explore other potential opportunities that could change some of the calculation here if there are, for example, existing facilities that could be repurposed, et cetera. But this, this gives you, a, I think, a good snapshot of a, of a conservative estimate of uh, what it might cost to actually implement this program. Uh, on the last column, uh, 
as a means of comparison, uh, the operating budget listed at 54 million for FY25, the FY19 operating costs uh, have been normalized to be apples to apples here, but are approximately $40 million. So uh, about a $14 million delta. Here's a schedule uh, that shows a hypothetical implementation plan. Uh, it, it's uh, obviously you can't read all this here, that's, that's fine. The main thing to understand is that if, if design for this program begins um, in the fourth quarter of 2020, uh, we're able to start pushing out uh, construction documents for various pieces of the program as early as the end of 2021 uh, and deliver uh, the first major component, the Juvenile Justice Center, uh, in approximately August of 2023. Uh, the jail as well, the adult jail, if it is proceeding along a similar timeline, uh, first two phases, which are titled phase 1A and B in the report, uh, would be expected to be completed in August of 2025. Uh, this timeline shows a, a immediate uh, proceeding with the third phase, phase 1C of the jail construction, which would allow it to be completed in May of 2027, but it's possible that component could be delayed um, uh, due to the realities, the realities of projected need versus actual needs as time goes by. Uh, other components uh, to point out here, uh, the Sheriff's Office uh, is delayed somewhat under the current plan uh, because of its proximity to both the adult jail and the uh, juvenile justice center. Uh, so it, it necessarily falls after the completion of the Juvenile Justice Center work uh, in February of 2025. Court's construction is shown uh, ending on the calendar in the fourth quarter of 2023, but as I mentioned before, uh, the slow growth of the needs for court's facilities over time may actually push the need to implement elements of this program uh, out both later in the timeline, but also more spread out across the timeline towards the end. Uh, so this is uh, nevertheless based on that implementation timeline, uh, we've provided for reference an annual capital spending program projection. So if the entire uh, program is implemented as shown in that timeline, the total capital budget of about 281 million, uh, takes about eight years to implement and uh, uh, peaks at about $90 million in 2022 and then gradually declines 63, 51, ultimately to about 18 million as the construction of the last phase of the jail completes in 2027. So I'm going to turn it back over to Curtis one more time here just to summarize uh, what we see as the priorities from this program. We, we understand it's a lot of information, but uh, there are some key takeaways that we, below, that we believe kind of rise above the general um, uh, information here that we've presented. Curtis? You're on mute. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Uh, as we said earlier, the, the top priority of all the projects is the Juvenile Service Center, uh, we Juvenile Services Center. We, we've got to get them out of their current location as fast as possible into proper and appropriate space to meet the needs of the, the youth of our of Williamson County. So they, 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 that needs to happen tomorrow, <laughs> if possible. Uh, the jail, they said, you know, to me, anticipated growth, you saw the growth as uh, you know, almost double over the next 25 years. Again, that became done, done in phases, but also it's a very staff and efficient facility. And I think we would uh, be, be wise to make that project also proceed in a fairly fast pace. The Sheriff's Office, uh, again, you know, it's part of its phasing because of its location right now in Century Court, as Jeff explained, but having a consolidated headquarters to provide proper law enforcement uh, uh, services for Williamson County residents and taxpayers, which is really important. So that does also does need to move, you know, move along. And the courts uh, can be delayed a little bit, 
Um, there, the building is, there is enough space for the next couple of years before we need to start making major investments in that facility. We may need to do some renovation work at the courthouse, historic courthouse. There's a lot of space there to be utilized, but uh, that could proceed on a, on a slightly slower pace than the other projects. But the juvenile services center has to happen right away. Okay, thank you, Curtis. That concludes our presentation and uh, we will turn it back over to Jim. Thanks, Jeff and Curtis. I appreciate you uh, running through that for everybody. So next steps, um, <clears throat> large part, the next step uh, is funding. And uh, this we know this is a large number. Uh, it's something you just now seen for the first time. So as soon as we get direction about funding and, and what time frame that we want to try to deliver these projects over, uh, the next step would be is we would go out and put the design team together to start with the juvenile services building. Um, and also I would look at this master plan as somewhat of a fluid document. Uh, Gresham Smith was asked to work with uh, county owned property, property that the county already owns. And um, there are a couple of properties that have become available. <clears throat> One's available, one is potentially available that we're exploring that could possibly help us from a timing perspective and also from a cost perspective. So with any capital project, we will always look for better opportunities uh, to save time and also uh, save money if possible. And uh, one of those properties you're considering tonight, we actually looked at that building this afternoon and we're going to determine uh, how that will be beneficial to us in this overall master plan. Uh, the 400 building on Beasley, for those of you who haven't been there, that building houses a lot of functions. Uh, archives is in that building. Uh, the Sheriff Special Ops is in that building. Parks and Rec is in that building, and it goes on and on. There's a lot of equipment. That building is going to be demolished uh, to allow for the juvenile services uh, to go there. Uh, that means that everybody that's in that building needs to find a new home. Uh, as you saw, special ops is projected to move up to where the recycling building is. Uh, currently, archives is projected to go out on the property on Old Charlotte where the animal center is going. Um, but both of those have to find a new home somewhere for that building to be demolished so that the new building can start. So this is a somewhat of a big puzzle that has to be orchestrated to make all that happen. Uh, maybe some of these other properties that we're looking at could potentially help with that uh, to where we would not necessarily have to demolish the 400 building or if we might could find a new home for these that would help with that. So um, as we decide how this funding is going to take place and what the timing is going to be, we're going to continually uh, massage this master plan to see if there's ways we can improve upon the timing and improve upon the budget. Um, that's really our report for you tonight. Um, both of us, all three of us will be happy to answer any questions. I know this is a lot to digest in a short period of time and uh, feel free to reach out to any of us if you'd like, if you have any further questions uh, after you've had a chance to really uh, look at this report. And uh, Mayor Anderson, that's our report. Thank you, Jim Curtis, Jeff. We appreciate the <clears throat> hard work, dedication. It's the single largest project Williams County have, has ever embarked on. And so uh, I'm open to any questions you may have, more clarification. You'll see more about this as we go down the road. But I'll entertain any questions if any of the commissioners have it. It's a lot of information. Commissioner Webb. There we go. Sorry, my mute button wouldn't work. Uh, this is a great presentation. I want to thank everybody for putting their time into it. I was able to attend some of these meetings and they're very uh, factual and a lot of information. So good job. Uh, I think Jim answered part of the question and I want to make sure I've got this right. Uh, we're putting a lot of stuff downtown and I think you said the only consideration was county owned properties. In some of the reviews by the uh, consultants, did you look at any other property outside of the existing downtown courthouse 
And if if yes, you have any ideas? And if not, wh why not? Jeff or Curtis, I think you'd be best to answer that. Sure, this is Jeff. Um, for the courts function, we really felt that we were able to accommodate the needs that the courts would have uh, over the planning horizon, uh, both within the facilities that exist today and then with a relatively modest expansion on the real estate that was directly adjacent. So we, we did not consider options to relocate the entire court's operation outside of downtown uh, for um, a, a host of reasons, uh, just in terms of the, the relative newness of some of the elements uh, that, that exist there today, the uh, impact uh, economically that the courts have on uh, downtowns, uh, and then sort of the civic, I guess, community symbolism of being located uh, at or near the center of town. Um, the facilities out on Beasley and at Century Court, uh, again, as I said earlier, um, one of the parameters for our master plan was to look only at real estate that the county owned. We did spend some time looking at real estate uh, that the county owns outside of the downtown area. Uh, the new animal control facility is being built on a pretty large piece of real estate, uh, but our analysis there determined that the topography of the site and some of the other conditions out there um, created uh, challenges for implementing the program that we have in an efficient manner. Hopefully that answered the question. Thank you. Uh, my only question was about the courthouse. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I have a follow-up, please? Go ahead. Okay. Um, I understand some of that about courts being in downtown, but, <clears throat> you know, in your consultation, did you get with the city of Franklin? Traffic is a mess in Franklin now without adding more. Parking is impossible during peak times. And then did anyone consult with the, the uh Travel Convention Bureau because we're trying to make downtown Franklin a go-to destination and so kind of packing a lot of stuff in a small space there. So how did you guys look at that? Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. And as Curtis mentioned, we recognize that parking is a challenge. Um, and uh, the, the scope of our study did not include looking at opportunities to uh, handle the additional parking. Um, partly because I would say that 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 would have entered us into much broader conversations about parking as a quote unquote public utility. And uh, I think we felt that uh, it was it was enough for the process that we were engaged in to identify that additional parking would be needed but to also recognize that satisfying that would probably be a much more complex, uh, more inclusive process looking at the city's needs, uh, biz other business needs, tourism needs, and so on. All right, thank you. You've, uh, other than the courthouse, you've done a great job, so I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I concur with Commissioner Webb. This is a great presentation, guys. Thank you so much. Um, I, I had a concern. Uh, we've talked about this uh, over the years. Our court time right now, if you file a, a um, lawsuit in Williamson County, the, the uh, court date you would get at one time was at least eight months out. I'm not sure. Does anybody know what our time frame is right now for getting a case to trial? Commissioner, this is Rogers Anderson. Um, I can't give you the exact time frame right now, but I can tell you under the COVID guidelines we've got, uh, we are really behind. And I see some smiles from attorneys and uh, <laughs> the legal folks right now. That's an unfair question. We may not get, uh, we can't get the courts uh, up and going and to play catch up yet. 
Uh, well, I understand the COVID situation right now. That's an unusual circumstance, but we we actually do have a constitutional obligation to provide swift justice. That's my concern. And I talked to one of our, our fine judges, which by the way, I think we've got some of the best judges in America here in Worcester County. And uh, um, the, the growth rate of civil trials has been enormous. Um, you know, divorce cases, business lawsuits, as, as you have pointed out, we've got a lot of corporate headquarters now moving here. So we're, we're getting a lot more of those. So since we're talking about doing a project, it's the largest project in Williamson County history. And we, uh, Commissioner Webb has laid out uh, very well some of the major challenges, which you you alluded to in your in your presentation of having a lot of uh, all, putting all of this downtown. Wouldn't it make sense for us to at least consider putting some court um, facilities out at the jail, so that would eliminate us from having to transport uh, criminals. Um, for criminal trials, for potentially, um, and uh, into the downtown, which does create um, a lot of security issues. Um, which right now, I understand we're, we're putting them on buses, you know, down there if they're in the old historic courthouse. Um, that may have changed since I've talked to some some of the um, the folks that do that. But I mean, it seems to me like we would want to at least consider all of our options right now. If, if if I may answer, Commissioner, we we very we really did discuss that with the judges, the general sessions and uh, common plea judges about having a uh, especially a general sessions court at the jail. Uh, we we have left room for that to happen, uh, if not initially down the road. So that is something that they would be willing to staff, and uh, could address some of that need that you just described. We we also just so you would know we didn't get into a whole court utilization analysis, but we did speak to uh, you know the clerks and the, and the clerk master and, the, and all the judges about better utilization of the courtroom spaces. Part of it they're hampered right now because of the way the courts are laid out, and especially the GS courses they're packed, as you said, you know we said as well. Um, so down the road we would look in our, our full report. Which goes more in depth in this. Um, just talk about hiring a, a position, a full time court administrator, a professional court administrator to better help with court utilization and management of court resources. So, you know, some of the delays you're mentioning, and again, we didn't get into why that is. Uh, we think down the road uh, that could be ameliorated by having a prof professional court administrator. Okay, so I guess in, in the answer to my question, you do have some potential court facilities in in your present in your plan or at least an option for that? Yeah, yes, we have an option for that, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Are there any uh, other questions? I'm not seeing other any others. Rogers? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll move on uh, again. Thanks to all the team members for doing that. You are um, be commended on that and there will be many changes. We'll be doing the um, pushing forward the first phase of this for uh, Judge uh, Sharon Guffey and the juvenile services down there over the next uh, few months to the attainment of an architect and getting this going. So you'll see some of that. Uh, if you go back to your report, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of $60 million, the cost of one high school. So that one will be coming to you in the very near future um, as we roll into 21 um, based on our capital programs and capital needs as we have. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could go right on into the introduction of uh, Matt Largen. Um, at the July County Commission meeting, uh, the topic came up of the Confederate flag. Uh, you all voted uh, to do a special task force, nine, nine elements of the special task force. Uh, those members were, uh, we reached out to them. Uh, they have served, Matt has, Matt has conducted this uh, very, very quickly and over the last two months, in order to get this report back to you by tonight's meeting as we had outlined. So, Mr. Chairman, without uh, further ado, 
I would like to ask Matt to jump on. Uh, there, are, I see many of his uh, members that are on there. He may want to introduce them or get into the actual report. Matt, thank you, and to all the committee task force, uh, thank you for doing that. Matt, great. great, thanks, Rogers. I appreciate it. And thank you, commissioners, as well. <clears throat> I want to start by thanking the volunteer community leaders who gave their most precious resource, their time to this important process that included seven meetings over a one month period. Uh, they took this incredibly seriously um, and that was evidenced by 100% attendance at every single one of those meetings. And as we get into questions tonight, a number of those members of the task force are on this call as well. The first meeting we decided unanimously to focus only on the quadrant with the Confederate flag. The task force was laser focused on that specific issue and their report reflects that focus. It was not in our scope to examine other symbols like monuments in our community or even other quadrants of the county seal based on the resolution. The rest of the meetings focused on research, reports from subcommittees, and citizen testimonials providing different perspectives. All the task force minutes which spoke to the task force actions were posted on the website williamsonchamber.com slash county seal. We did not even discuss the ultimate recommendation until a week before we finalized the report. We let the, the research guide our individual and ultimately our collective decision. Pursuant to the resolution, we provided a public forum for feedback on the SIL through the website that I mentioned earlier. It's important to note that this was not a scientific poll, it was not a randomized sampling of residents, it's simply a forum for public input and quotes and responses that came through that website are in the report. Learn the flag means different things to different people, and that's also reflected in the report as well. We were asked through the resolution to evaluate the SIL from a variety of perspectives, including potential financial impact, impact on tourism and business, and social and public interest impact, and that's how the report is divided. We were presented with an overall estimated cost to remove and replace the SIL and understand the cost of removing or replacing the SIL can be spread over time. For example, one of the single biggest line items in the financial section, $15,000 for removal of the county seal from the Terrazzo Tile 4, can be accomplished by covering up the seal temporarily with, for example, a $20 rug. Research concluded there is a risk to tourism and business recruitment and retention if the Confederate flag is left on the seal, which directly impacts the county budget, especially since the task force and this issue has garnered so much media attention. The social and public interest section is hard to quantify, but what we did learn is that it doesn't make the pain any less real that some longtime residents feel when they see the Confederate flag on our county seal. To those residents who have lived here their entire life, have helped build this community and raised a family here, the flag is not welcoming, it's not inclusive, but a symbol of oppression and it's divisive because it has been used by groups like the Ku Klux Klan. Based on the entirety of the research, the task force voted unanimously to recommend the removal of the Confederate flag from the Williamson County seal. Thanks. Rogers. I don't see Rogers on. At, at this point in time, we had discussed this morning the possibility of moving resolution 9-20-18 to this point in time, since we have got the all the members of the task force online. Uh, are there any objections to moving up and hearing this resolution, resolution 9-20-18 at this point in time? I am not hearing any objections. Resolution 9-20-18, resolution to accept and adopt the report of the task force established for the purpose of evaluating the official Williamson County seal. Commissioner Webb. Move for approval. A second. Uh, uh, identify yourself, please. Commissioner Hudson, second. And the property committee was three, four, and two against. The budget committee was three, four, and two against. 
And at this time, I guess, uh, explanation, please, Commissioner Webb. Uh, first off, uh, if it's an order, Commissioner Little, I would like to amend what went out in the packet and uh, to be that the electronic version of the county seal task force report be accepted as the official uh, report, but I'll need to amend what went out on 920-18 for that to happen. So the the amendment would be that we accept the uh, the official report that was sent out as the final draft, and what we sent out was the draft. Uh, do we have a second to that uh, amendment? Lather second. That has been seconded. Now, explanation, please. Uh, at this point, we've heard from uh, Chair Large, and I would like to hear from Attorney uh, Mosley about the process. I think that this body has gone through this at our last meeting. We understand what we've got here and then open the floor up, Mr. Chair, suggest that for questions to Mr. Large and Mr. Mosley. Mr. Chairman, um, I've been asked by uh, Commissioner Webb to uh, discuss what exactly the commission is voting on and what the next steps are, uh, depending on the outcome of that vote. Tonight, you are being asked as a commission uh, pursuant to resolution 9 2018 to accept the report of the county seal task force uh, and making a finding that there is a substantial uh, need to alter the seal by removing the flag the resolution if passed would authorize the uh, county mayor to make application to the state historical commission to for permission to alter the seal using the county task force or county seal task force report as the underlying basis and the report required by statute to file such an application um jeff so if i could interrupt you just a second sure uh, uh we did not vote on the amendment to make the to replace the draft resolution with the final i think we need to get that amendment voted before we discuss uh yes, is that sure. not correct yeah, I was just describing the process, which would be applicable either way, but you can do the amendment first and then we'll go back to this. I, there are only a couple more things. Okay, uh, well, go ahead and finish your points, then we'll vote then. <laughs> okay, assuming that there is an application to the State Historical Commission because this has passed, and of course, if the resolution um, does not pass, then there would be no application to the state, but it <clears throat> passes and there is an application. The State Historical Commission would have to make a determination as to whether it was within their jurisdiction and make a finding as to the need to uh, um, alter the county seal. If it found that it was not within their jurisdiction, it would come back to the county for your uh, discretion and your determination as to how to act. If it was within their jurisdiction and that was their finding, they would then have to vote by two thirds of a vote um, to approve the amendment, at which point, again, the matter would come back to the county commission to determine how the seal would be altered other than with the determination that the Confederate flag would be removed. Those options could include changing that segment, uh, that quadrant of the seal, retirement of the seal as a whole, um, or redesign of the seal in some other way, but that would be within the discretion of the committee. <clears throat> At that point, after passing this resolution and the historical commission, state historical commission voting by a two thirds vote to approve the amendment or uh, modification of the county seal. And I'd be glad to answer any questions on procedure after you've gotten through the amendment process. Uh, is there any discussion on replacing the draft report with the final report that was emailed? Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Uh, Commissioner Osbrooks, absent. Commissioner Bill. Commissioner Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Commissioner Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, no. Commissioner Herbert. Okay, this is just to replace that with the draft, right? Yes. Okay. That, that is correct. Herbert, yes. Okay, Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes, on the draft. 
Commissioner Hudson. Commissioner Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Commissioner Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Commissioner Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Mr. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers. Lothers, yes. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. <laughs> that was a big yes by me. <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Yes, Rainey. Commissioner Smith. Mr. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Commissioner Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Commissioner Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. Okay, I have 22 yes and one no. The amendment passes. Now, to any questions on the resolution of accepting the report and submitting it to uh, the State Historical Commission. Yes, I have a question. All right, Commissioner, Commissioner Hester. Hester. You are still muted, Commissioner Hester. All right. You are asking about a question. Could you repeat what you, what you just said? You are asking about a question to uh, Mr. Mosley. Now, any questions on the resolution? The resolution is to ad adopt the report of the task force and to present a report to the historical commission for consideration to change the seal. If, if I'm not phrasing that correctly, the attorney, please correct me. Yes, that's correct. Thank you, Chairman Little. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mosley. I have questions on this task force report. What if we, and it's to uh, Mr. Mosley, what if we voted tonight to defer this vote? Then it would be handled as any other deferral. Um, it would have it would need to be a deferral to a specific time, or it would effectively be a table, which would mean that it would have to be taken from the table at a later date. A deferral to a definitive time, the October meeting, the November meeting, whatever it would be would be a, a proper deferment. Um, the other is actually an indefinite would be a tabling of it, which is a, a a, quite a different matter. Thank you, Mr. Mosley. I would like to say that I have had many constituents who are not pleased with other quadrants of the county seal, the uh, agricultural quadrant, the religious quadrant, and um, I haven't heard anything about the upper right-hand quadrant, but I have heard from people who wish to update the entire seal. Uh, I will let, I want others to speak, of course, but I am very concerned about the cost of the changes in this seal will be. I am concerned because we will take, need legal representation and submittal to take any, any development to the Tennessee Commission, the Tennessee Historical Commission. That will cost at least hundreds, I believe that'll cost about $100,000. To rip up the floor in the Judicial Center will cost about $15,000. That's only demolition. That will not cover the cost of putting in a new seal, a 
new quadrants, etc. I I am really not happy about this whole thing. I do appreciate the task force. I appreciate their volunteer hours. I appreciate their attendance in all these meetings, but I do not think this issue has been covered sufficiently. I would like to make a motion to defer until November 2020, the vote on this Williamson County seal. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mosley, can the person who actually make a discussion then turn around and make a motion to defer? I, I was all, always under the impression that you couldn't discuss, then vote to move to defer. That's correct. So since you discussed the resolution, it is out of order to try to make the motion to defer. That would have to be made by somebody else. Or everyone else would have to have an, an opportunity to discuss, and then she could regain the floor. Oh, okay, I'll yield the floor so other people can have an opportunity to discuss. Thank you. Commissioner Sturgeon. Thank you, Chairman. Um, my question is just clarification. Um, if we were to accept this report, the consequence is simply the removal of the flag. It's not any other revisions to the seal. I mean, we're just, it would just be a removal of the Confederate flag or would the flag be replaced with a different flag or a different object? Uh, I just wanna be clear on what we're voting on. Um, and I'd also, I, I'm, I, I'm, in a time like right now in America where um, there's a rush to remove our heritage, a, a rush to remove anything that uh, symbolizes our history and what makes America, 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 I think it's a terrible time to be erasing something from our seal. And I'm not convinced that the majority of Williamson Countyans are for this. I, I I like the idea of a deferral, if that would include some kind of assessment of what the county real, what the people who live here really want. Um, and I'm really upset about that, about the idea of dishonoring the soldiers that died in the Civil War, because that's what that flag was put on the cannon for, was to honor those soldiers that lost their lives in the Civil War. That's what it meant originally. and. I don't think the meaning has changed just because some people have decided that the Confederate flag is racist because it, that's not was never the intention when it went on there. So if it has to go, it needs to be replaced with something that honors the soldiers that died in the Civil War. Our Williamson County soldiers, the ancestors of the people that live here. So, but question is, can you clarify what a yes vote on this means, please? Jeff, please. Yeah, the yes vote in this case would be to accept the report and authorize the mayor to apply to the historical commission for permission to alter the county seal by removal of the flag. Anything other than that would be decided later by the commission as to what replaced it, if anything replaced it, or if anything else on the seal was altered. Mm. So it does, it's, it's not in stone. Anything could happen to the seal, ultimately, if we vote yes on this. Is that right, Jeff? If you remove the Confederate flag, it's no longer considered art within the jurisdiction of the State Historical Commission. The, com the county commission would have the authority to do whatever it wished with the county seal. The only reason the state is involved at all is because of the memorialization of the conflict which the statute refers to as the war between the states. So, but that my question is, is if we vote yes on this, are we opening up any potential revision of the seal? 
it would have to come back to you that you would have you would have to consider that it's always available uh, once you remove the the memorial to the Civil War you would have any option you wanted to but this report only uh, recommends removal of the Confederate flag. But the answer to my question is yes. If we vote yes on this on this report, we've gone down a path that could go in other directions. Sure. sure. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I pretty much said my piece on this issue in July when we spent approximately five hours individually trying to redesign the flag. The, uh, the mayor had a good idea to collect public opinion by developing the task force. Uh, the task force has done what they were asked to do by our vote in July, and they've submitted their report uh, we could spend another five hours tonight trying as individuals to redesign a county seal to what we think it should be. But in reality, what we need to do is simply vote on the report of the task force and be done with that for tonight. Commissioner Lothers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was wondering if County Historian Rick Warwick was on online tonight as part of the committee. Perhaps, perhaps he's not on with the task force. I guess I would just quote something that I read that he had said in the Herald and that during the census period of time that we are discussing, you know, we had 11,000 white settlers and 12,000 African American slaves. And in this battle that is so emotional and poignant and devastating to so many of our local families and individual loved ones that they lost, there is a collective loss and there's an individual loss. And what that flag represents for those who were memorialized under it as the individuals that they loved to me, it is not discredited by admitting that descendants of those slaves that actually built our county alongside of every other white settler have to also be represented on our county seal. It is not with shame, but it is actually with pride and a canon to reflect there was a significant historical battle and that there was union lives and so many Confederate lives that were lost during that battle. So I am comfortable supporting the task force recommendation. Uh, Commissioner Ayala. Yes, I've got a, a question for, for Mr. Mosley um, regarding the historic uh, commission. Uh, with respect to both the flag and the cannon, uh, being placed in the upper left quadrant uh, to reflect, as it's stated on the on the county website, uh, the rich history of the county. Um, it's my understanding that this um, request that's before us is to simply remove the flag because that is a historical remembrance, and at which point it would be kicked back to the commission to do what it wants to with the rest of the seal. But is it not true that the cannon is also part of that historical remembrance? Um, wouldn't we have to ask to remove that portion as well? Or does that part have to be left untouched uh, if we don't ask the historical commission to change it? Well, I think that the real question is, is does a canon of itself um, designate a specific war? And that's where the Confederate flag becomes uh, important to the question of whether it designates the war between the states as listed by um, the, the statute that authorized the Historical Commission to consider this matter. While I think you might be able to make an argument, I don't think that canon is specifically identifiable to only one conflict um, and therefore would not fall within that. Um, someone may disagree with that, and, and I can assure you there is certainly no commentary or case law as to uh, 
whether or not that would apply or not. Does the intent of the artwork itself come into play in that part of that analysis with the historical commission? I, I don't know the answer to that and what they might or might not see as important for the determination of the canon itself. Well, I suppose my question is, would it not be more prudent to ask if the county commission wants to have free reign on the redesign um, to not run that risk and ask to remove the entirety of the quadrant itself, if that's its intent to be able to come back for a redesign uh, to put whatever it wants to on the seal, um, or at least run the risk of it being kicked back and that part being classified as a historical remembrance, um, since it is a, a federal canon on the seal itself. Uh, the application could certainly ask for the ability to do that, um, and, and I do not think that would be problematic uh, on the application. You would still have the ability to retain it if you so chose. The resolution doesn't specify that the application is limited to removal of the flag. Um, it only says uh, recommend to adopt the recommendation of the task force and to file an application uh, with the Historic Commission to alter uh, the county seal. It doesn't specify only the removal of the flag. Um, doesn't the resolution, or at least the report itself, outline three categories for possible uh, examination? One is the removal of the quadrant or redesign. The other is the retirement of the county seal. The other is simply the removal of the flag. Um, and the recommendation from the task force is just for the removal of the flag. Um, so if we follow this resolution, Essentially, we can only ask for that adoption of that recommendation of the removal. Is, is that correct? As the resolution is drafted, I'm not sure I agree totally with that. I think that's one interpretation. I think if you wanted to amend the resolution to say and removal of the canon, that would certainly be within your purview. But I can certainly argue that the uh, the the main focus of the recommendation was removal of the Confederate flag, which is what identifies it as a civil war or a war between the states memorial within the meaning of the statute. Thank you. Commissioner Williams. I think I think we're all attacking Jeff here to get clarifying questions. Um, so the resolution is basically requesting to modify the seal. The supporting evidence is going to be the task force report, which really analyzed the Confederate flag, the presence of the Confederate flag. My question is, is that if we adopt this report, are we simply asking for the opportunity to modify the seal, or are we going to be obligated at that point then to at least have to remove the flag, or do we still have purview to make any modifications necessary that we believe necessary later down the road. Yeah, I, th I think there are two step processes here. Again, remember, the only reason the State Historical Commission is involved at all is because the county seal as a piece of art as defined by the statute contains a memorialization of, again, what's referred to in statute as the war between the states. Once that memorialization is altered, in this case, removal of the flag, I do not believe the county seal as a, a piece of art or a memorialization, no, it no longer reflects only the Civil War, even with the canon still there, and is therefore no longer within the jurisdiction of the State Historical Commission and the County Commission after that's removed can do what it wants with any or all parts of the seal. The only thing you would not be able to do is add the the Confederate flag back. So we are requesting to modify the seal with the only thing we're being handicapped to is that the flag, the Confederate flag will no longer be on it. Like that option will be off the table. For the purposes of the request of the historical commission, you are limiting it to the removal of the flag, which would take it outside of their jurisdiction if they approve. So, so just to make sure I'm perfectly clear, if we adopt this report and pass this resolution, Confederate flag's gone, assuming that historical commission approves it. Agrees by two thirds of a vote, yes. All right, thank you. Commissioner Hudson. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to 
the task force members, uh, Matt Largen, Ellie Westman Chin, Emily Bowman, Lisa Campbell, Annetta Gaines, Paula Harris, Hewitt Sawyers, Rick Warwick, and Dr. Chris Williamson. Thank you guys. Um, I agree with Commissioner Smith. I think that we should not try to develop a seal tonight. I think that we should vote on what the task force has recommended. I will not be supporting a, a deferral. I think that uh, some of us knew coming in whether we would vote yes or no. I think that some of my peers may decide to vote for a deferral just simply to push it back further and further and further without voting at all. It's disheartening to think that we would even contemplate on saving a symbol that is a universal hate symbol. Now, I agree that there may be a portion of heritage, but you can't deny in this diverse county that this is a symbol of universal hate. We talk about adopting, um, who are we talking about adopting the Confederate flag? Are we talking about the Dixiecrats who were against integration back in Jim Crow era? Or are we, or are we talking about the Ku Klux Klan? Two organizations that adopted the flag simply for hate tactics and scaring the people of color. So if we truly represent the people of our county, this shouldn't be a difficult decision. We said that we wanted, and even when I suggested or, or suggested that we vote on it last month, a lot of you said that you wanted to wait to hear what the task force had to say. Here we are tonight. The task force has given their recommendation. Yet and still, we see that we're going to back play and down play, but I will not be supporting a deferral tonight. Thank you. Commissioner Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to join Commissioner Hudson in thanking the task force. Uh, thanks, Matt, uh, for your hard work on this, um, and, and particularly for keeping the focus on this uh, to uh, the flag and the quadrant. Um, it, it could have, uh, I, my concern was it could have gotten a lot uh, broader than that, and, and you did a great job of keeping it confined to to the subject that we asked you to do so i appreciate that very much uh, one of the things that surprised me in this report was how close the survey results were when when you did your survey we understand that's not a scientific survey but it was almost 50 50 when you surveyed the uh the citizens and of course, I guess there's no way of knowing whether they're actually county citizens or from other places, but at any rate, the the survey showed that the county, if we were to take that as a snapshot, is, is pretty much evenly divided on this issue as to whether the flag should be removed or not. So I've been wrestling with this um, myself um, as to how, how I should vote on this, given the um, given the the, the the county is is very evenly divided, and so I um, I reached out to Jody Bowman, who is the son of Virginia Bowman. I, I knew Mrs. Virginia Bowman. Miss um, Virginia Bowman, the former county historian, was a very gracious and kind lady. She was a first-rate historian who knew the history of this county extremely well. And um, I do think she's been unfairly maligned by, by some in this process, um, which is very unfortunate because anybody who knew her would never, um, would never think that she put something on the county seal um, with, with any uh, intent of, of this uh, being um, 
um, offensive to um, a group of people. And and it, you know, at the time this was was put on there, it was it was a different era. So um, I don't think the thought crossed her mind, but. I did talk to Jody about this today, and uh, uh, many of you probably know Jody. Jody was, uh, he's a fine gentleman, a very prominent banker in this community for many, many years. Um, and so I just uh, put the question to him. I said, Jody, if this is, if your mother was here today, what, what would she say about the situation and what would, she, what do you think she would think we should do? And um, he kind of surprised me with his answer. He, he said that that he said he said he he thought that she would just say to do away with the seal entirely, um, instead of having a rancorous debate. And um, one of the things that is also I don't know that it's in the report here, but Matt, you you also found out that there's how many how many counties in Tennessee don't even have a seal. Sure, thanks, Craig. Uh, Forty eight counties do not have a seal. Forty seven do have a county seal. Okay, so actually more counties don't have a seal than do have a seal. So we don't even have to have a seal. I don't think most people in the county even knew we had a seal before this this, uh, this debate came up, much less the fact that it had a Confederate flag on it. So um, I, whether we have a seal or not it is not, not a critical issue. However, um, I do agree with Commissioner Sturgeon also. I think she makes a great point. Uh, I'm not, a particularly keen on removing historic emblems. Um, I do think the seal was very tastefully done. It does represent the history of this county very well. Um, and um, I do think uh, symbols are important. So I'm not at this time uh, really ready to say I'm ready to do away with this, but um, I will vote for this tonight, and if the if the commission agrees that we can remove the flag, then I guess we're left with a cannon in the upper left quadrant. Is that is that right, Mr. Mosley? We're just going to be left with a cannon. Is that correct? That is not necessarily the result. They they could remove the cannon as well. They could. Uh, this is just asking permission from the historical commission to remove the Confederate flag. After that, any design or any further modification would be left to the county commission to determine. Okay, but just to clarify, they aren't gonna tell us we have to remove the cannon too. They're only gonna make a decision on the flag, correct? They, they have no authority to tell you you have okay. to remove it as well. So if the flag's gone, we're basically left with a cannon and then it's gonna be up to us to decide if we wanna add anything to that or take that away or totally redesign that quadrant, correct? Okay, so um, you know if there's something as as Commissioner Sturgeon has pointed out that we could put in here that would commemorate I don't know a picture of Farnton maybe the the cemetery and, and the picture of of Farnton there uh, that would commemorate the battle and um, you know the fact that this was the last great battle of the Civil War it was the Civil War is. Uh, perhaps the greatest, one of the greatest events in American history. It's certainly one of the top two or three. And it is a event that still fascinates American Civil War books still sell lots of, of books every year. Um, and we get thousands of tourists here every year that uh, come to, to Franklin for that reason. So I, I do think it's something that we need to maintain on the seal if we do modify it. Um, but I, I will vote for this tonight um, and, and, and basically wait to see what the Historic Commission says before we uh, make any decisions on that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Jeff, uh, just as a point of clarification, uh, if we approve this tonight, and the historical commission approves this. We we still have to have their approval, even if we decide we want to retire the seal without removing the flag. Would that still be a possibility if this passes? Sure. If this passes and it goes to the commission, if they approve removing the flag, you can retire the seal, you can do anything you want to it. It is no longer in their jurisdiction. 
Thank you. I just wanted to get that that clarification out. Uh, are there any other questions? I see none on my board here. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Chair, we need to vote on the amendment, don't we? Never we voted on the amendment. The amendment okay. passed. I'm, I'm, okay. It's been a while since we voted. Thank you. Oh. Call the roll, Jeff. All right, Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Commissioner Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Commissioner Bethard, yes. Commissioner Shalfont. Commissioner Shalfont, no. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, no. Commissioner Hester. Hester, no. Commissioner Hudson. Commissioner Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, no. Good. Ricky Jones. Commissioner Ricky Jung, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Commissioner Landrum, yes. Ah. Commissioner Lawrence. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Damn. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers. Lothers, yes. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Commissioner Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, no. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, no. Commissioner Smith. Commissioner Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Commissioner Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, no. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. We missed it. Commissioner Webb, yes. Got seven. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. So I have 16 yes and seven no. Resolution passes. Back to the regular agenda. It is now eight after nine. Uh, I'm going to suggest a recess uh, for bathroom breaks and whatever, and let's come back at 20 after. That'll give us 12 minutes. Let's come back at 20 after and resume the agenda unless there's objections.
meeting back in session. Rogers, does that conclude your report? Mr. Chairman, did you need any more reports tonight or would you like to go on to the resolutions? Uh, well, we'll give Jason at least an opportunity to address uh, his report. And then from there, I guess, unless we have any others, we'll move on to resolutions. All right. Now, I'm, that concludes everything that I needed to discuss. Thank you. All right, Jason. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to double check and make sure you can hear me. Thank yes, you. sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll make this brief, but uh, um, we all know that it's uh, it's been a real struggle for so many members of the community from the business community on down with uh, with uh, COVID-19. But I want to start on something positive. Uh, just a few days ago, <clears throat> we were informed that for the third year in a row, over 50 of our students were named as National Merit semifinalists. So uh, even in this tough environment, um, our students continue to knock it out. Our teachers continue to knock it out. And I want to let you guys know um, we're so proud of them. I think it's been a rare occasion these last few months that, uh, that, uh, it, that we've been able to talk about something positive. So I felt like uh, when we hit those milestones, it's important to, to acknowledge. Uh, we do have some items on the agenda for you tonight. Uh, they are generally related to COVID-19 really in two big uh, big sections, which we are finding as we progress are the, are the two largest elements of change for us, at least in this window of time. Uh, number one, as many of you know, uh, we, uh, we have greatly expanded our online program uh, because of uh, the, the needs and wishes of our families in this environment. It's something that many school systems did. Uh, and uh, we call that WCS online. We have about 6,700 students in there. Uh, the second uh, um, item that, uh, that, that has been such a big change for us is, of course, when we've returned to campus, uh, the health department um, had some recommendations for us to require some safety measures. But on top of that, when there's a positive case, they also do a, a, a contract tracing program and uh, ultimately make decisions on isolating those positive cases and then quarantine those who have been exposed within that within that uh, definition of, um, of close contact that they use. Both of those two items uh, have, uh, have placed a pretty heavy burden on, on uh, not only the health department and what they do, but on our school system with, uh, uh, with work. So the items that we have before you tonight are related to uh, an additional staff to help uh, with those challenges. Uh, the, the reality for us is that frankly, we're just not staffed. Uh, right now to deal with uh, with those with those uh, with those additional elements. I will also tell you as a reminder, our original budget plan that uh, that we had provided to our board uh, right uh, just a little bit before COVID-19 hit um, was uh, just about $12 million more than we ultimately presented to you because we wanted to make sure that we participated uh, as a community as, and as a team. Uh, in that, um, and you will see that the that the that the elements of what we're asking for are are well well below uh, that original plan. Uh, uh, with that in mind, uh, that uh, concludes my report. You're muted, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Lawrence. Mr. Story is first. Commissioner Lawrence, you had a question? Commissioner Story is before me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't say that. Commissioner Story. I'm trying, but somebody is throwing the mute button at me. Um, Jason, quick, uh, Director Golden, I have a quick question. So, from um, you know, from the state funding standpoint, you know, they they give us funding based on um, each of the, the full time equivalent, or I can't remember the 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 the, uh, the terminology, but basically, uh, the enrollment we we get a a, a certain amount from the state based on our enrollment. 
from what I understand, we've we've had a kind of a backwards trend uh, due to homeschooling and and private schooling and other aspects. How does that affect the uh, overall budget uh, for outlays for this year, based on what we had what we approved uh, with, with last year's uh, budget? Uh, how, how does that how does that align with um, current enrollment? Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Commissioner. You are correct that uh, um, uh, the WCS has, has had a reduction in uh, in students of about 1,298 based on apples to apples uh, from last year to this year, uh, and it is largely uh, as a result of uh, individuals who either chose homeschool or private school. I will tell you across the state, we're hearing that that's common. Most of uh, most of the school districts, especially in the metro metropolitan areas around the the cities have experienced that this year. I will tell you also that, uh, that we've seen that really most pronounced at kindergarten because uh, I believe it's because parents can choose uh, to, whether to send a kindergartner at age five or age six. And so our production, uh, our projections are significantly lower for that. From a BEP funding formula, uh, the state does give us a portion uh, of uh, funding for each student. I do want to ask Leslie Holman, our our, uh, our finance director, assistant superintendent for for our finance, to uh, to give a more specific answer to your question. Um, the only money that is in question, uh, the amount that they told us in the July final, is set. It's a number regardless of the number of students we have this year. We will get the amount that they tell us in that last letter. Um, the only part that we may not get is the amount of money that I estimated for growth. Uh, we've always been a growing county and I've always estimated the amount of growth based on the prior year's amount of growth. Um, and I questioned the uh, Department of Education about this and she said that a lot of the counties are not growing and they've got a pot of money for growth so uh, at this time, based on the formula and whether I grow or not, I would say I wouldn't get that growth money. But again, it's money in their budget and a lot of the counties will not be growing. And I wonder if there might be something that could be done that possibly says the growing counties consistently over so many years do receive a share of growth. But the only amount in question is the amount I budgeted for growth. Yeah, follow up, uh, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank, thank you. So, and I guess that's one of the questions and concerns that I have is, you know, there there is you know squeeze the jello mold here where we get pressure one place and we try to address it and then we we have other areas that expand and and um, uh, and and that we're reacting to and I guess. I know from from this standpoint of schools who had certain numbers, and then as as the 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 total numbers started to trend down, there was teachers that were moved, let go, or or not let go. I don't think we've let anybody go, but we we've, we've moved teachers around to help support other areas. But I guess that's one of the questions and concerns that I just need to understand is. I know from a technical standpoint, we you know we just didn't have tech, uh, uh, online technical support hanging around that we that we can pull. We, that is a net new potential. Case. But um, um, but from a resource standpoint, how does how do the the teacher resources that we have that have been removed out of a classroom potentially um, address some of the other needs that we see? due to the um, uh, unforeseen issues, are, are there any opportunities there instead well, of just coming for new positions? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a great question. So number one, uh, we, have, we did not uh, fully employ based upon our budget, even this current budget. Uh, we are below our budget in number in teachers uh, because uh, we, we anticipated that. However, at the elementary school level, we did, we were overstaffed. So we did move uh, um, some teachers at the elementary school level out of a classroom based on student numbers. You all who've been on the commission you know for many years, we've pressed, we've pressed that envelope with a pupil teacher ratio, especially at the elementary level. Uh, we still have those teachers employed. 
Uh, we believe that this is a one year or possibly two year uh, dip based on uh, COVID-19. Uh, we are using them in interim positions. Uh, we have, of course, many, uh, many teachers who go out for health issues, for maternity leave, et cetera. So uh, we are using those teachers to fill in those spots uh, and, and make sure they, are, they all still uh, stay employed. Final thing I got to mention with that, there's a shortage of teachers in Tennessee. Uh, and so uh, we did want to make sure that, uh, that, that we stayed below our budget, uh, but still kept those, te those teachers employed even in this unusual time. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, uh, Director Golden. Now, Commissioner Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Jason. Uh, just a quick question, sort of a follow up, I guess. Um, I take what as Leslie just said as good news uh, since we're getting BEP money and we're not incurring maybe the expenses that we might be if those students were in school. But I know we also have a significant number of students that are, are learning online that are still part of the system, correct? How many do we have right now online? About 6,700 are fully online this semester. All right, so I, I'm assuming that's the need for the 300,000 for the online uh, support tonight that we're gonna vote on. So are there some savings though that are going to be generated um, due to the fact that you have that, that number of students um, that aren't in the classroom that might actually help us uh, with the budget this year? Well, so uh, from, a, from a saving standpoint, all our systems are still operating uh, because we do have students on campus, uh, utilities, buses, uh, food service. Um, I will tell you that on the food service side, and I know that doesn't usually hit uh, hit your your budget uh, much. Uh, it's a it's a self contained budget. We're actually selling a little bit less food uh, right now, but that's that's a that's a revenue a lost revenue item in that in that enterprise fund. Um, from a savings perspective, um, we're still employing teachers. Uh, the savings is going to be pretty negligible uh, because the vast majority of our expenditures related to serving students. Uh, is actual teachers, uh, and we are still we still need to run the bus routes for the 80 uh, 83 percent of our total student population that uh, that is still attending on campus. Leslie, you may have a couple of examples of uh, of some relatively small savings uh, with uh, with the students participating online, but they're also uh, um, open to participate in extracurricular activities as well. So, from my perspective, uh, it, I think it's going to be a pretty negligible savings. Um, the only savings, like Jason said, we are not at full hire. And so since we're not at full hire, that is always a savings for us. And um, a couple of the resolution, or at least one of the resolutions, you can see that I'm taking the savings to pay for um, that expense that we're asking for. Okay, and one other question is, did we get any money from the CARES Act that was passed? Uh, did that cut trickle down to uh, Williamson County? Yes, we did. Um, we got it last year and we used it in the food service fund. Um, we, we have a lot of opportunities for grants and the, count, uh, the school system has gone for them in every area that they can. They're not just the CARES Acts, but uh, they've gotten some for computers. They've gotten some for uh, the Khajiits. Uh, the connectivity, uh, but they were specific to those kind of needs. Um, and we also are trying to get some FEMA fund for some of our things too. So we're going after several different types of grants to try to help us with all the expenses that uh, in an online sort of caused an expense that was unexpected during the budget time and so was not included in the budget. Um, but uh, I believe Nina is getting a grant that she is using the grant to help us buy some more computers um, that align with our system. And uh, Mr. Commissioner, we actually have one of the items on tonight's agenda that we yeah. propose to actually be funded 75% from FEMA as well. And I actually wanted to thank the mayor also. The mayor uh, a few months ago um, uh, uh, gave us the name of someone who could actually give us some advice for free about, about FEMA. So uh, we learned a lot in the past few months about some of, uh, some of those resources. Okay, thanks, Jason. Thanks for all your hard work. You know, it's been a year of, uh, you've sort of been trialed by fire this year. So uh, 
We appreciate you hanging in there for your leadership. I know it's been tough. Uh, Ms. Leslie, I would have one question for you. Do you have any idea of what your sales tax is trending? Uh, I think I turned my. Oh, I was on. Uh, I was sort of pleased with uh, the recent sales tax. It was not a decrease. It was almost a flat line uh, from the year last year's collections. So I'm hoping that's going to be an upward twin. Of course, it's the first one to come in after the two that we projected that uh, would be low for uh, June and July. But when August came, uh, my August payment that came in, it was right at what we've made the last August. So that was a little encouraging to me. Um, sometimes uh, if it, any year, there might be two months in 12 that are negative. From the prior year, so I that this might be my negative, but it was only just minimal by about like thousands of dollars, not hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I'm a little encouraged with my sales tax, and and when I looked at the privilege tax for the county, I was a little I was you know one our worst year, you know, so I was sort of impressed with that also. So uh, I'm hoping that um, the revenues. You know, we're gonna, I'm, I don't think they're going to be huge, but I, I don't think they're going to be as devastating as we first saw. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from Jason or Leslie? Okay, is there anyone else needing to make a report to the county? Seeing none, moving on with the agenda. Uh, we have next elections and appointments, and we do have to do these by roll call. Uh, first up is an appointment by the county mayor, regional planning commission, term expiring in March of 2021. Resigned Holly Givens. Uh, nomination Jessica uh, Lucy. Yes. And a motion. Commissioner Story, a motion to approve. Second. Mr. Lawrence, second. Thank you. Uh, at any other nominations? If not, call, call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Commissioner Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Commissioner Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers. Lothers, yes. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Commissioner Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Commissioner Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Commissioner Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Commissioner Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 23 yes, zero no. Nomination passes. Next, we have uh, two committees that were inadvertently left off of our special session. First, we have audit committee. The nomination was Steve Smith, and then we have human resources committee. Nomination was Chad Story. We will take these together. We'll entertain a motion. So moved, Commissioner Webb. Second, Commissioner Lawrence. Okay. Uh, call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Allsbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. 
Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Commissioner Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Commissioner Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. <coughs> yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers. Lothers, yes. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. yes, yes, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Sorry about that. No problem. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Smith. Mr. Smith abstain. All right. Commissioner Story. Commissioner Story abstains. Okay. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. So I have 21 yes and two abstentions. Nominations pass. Next, we have the Library Board of Trustees, three-year term expiring in June of 2023, term expiring Terry Hood, nomination Amy Baggett. Entertain a motion. Move for approval, Commissioner Webb. Mr. Smith, second. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Brooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Commissioner Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers. Lothers, yes. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nation. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Mr. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Commissioner Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yeah. Commissioner, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. I have 23 yes, zero no. Nomination passes. Next, we have the consent agenda. The only thing on the consent agenda are the uh, notaries. We'll entertain a motion. Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith. Second, Commissioner Webb. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Commissioner Hudson, yes. Commissioner <coughs> Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers. Lothers, yes. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. 
Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 23 yes, zero no. Consent agenda passes. Next, we have resolution 9-20-1, resolution amending the 2020-2021 general purpose school budget, $296,485 for additional tech coaches and support specialists. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Move for approval. Story second. Commissioner Story, the second school board was 1240 against. Education committee was 640 against. Budget committee was 540 against. Explanation, please, Mr. Tunnicliffe. Yeah, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory there when you when you read the resolution. Once again, as a case, COVID is reality. We all are aware of that. And uh, we're trying to make sure that the school system is able to take care of their, uh, their coaches support specialist in this coming year. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Ayala. Ayala, yes. Commissioner Hallsbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Commissioner Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers. Lothers, yes. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Commissioner Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Commissioner Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-2. Resolution authorizing the Williams County Mayor to execute a purchase agreement to purchase improved real property located at 305 Beasley Drive in Franklin, Tennessee at a cost not to exceed $7 million for the purchase, due diligence, and associated closing costs. Commissioner Story. Commissioner, there we go. There we go. Uh, motion to approve. Story Commissioner motion Dwight Jones, second. Commissioner Dwight Jones, the second. Property committee was 740 against. Budget committee was 440 against with one abstain. Uh, explanation, please. Is that Commissioner Story, Mr. Chair? Yes, it's Commissioner Story. Sorry, fighting with technology at the moment. Um, and, and so I, I'll, I'll have to apologize. I don't. I don't have it in front of me. Um, it's a, this was a, this was for property on Beasley Drive to help, if I remember correctly, help um, uh, with the potential set up for the JJJ uh, implementations that we talked about earlier. It's about, about property that has become available that's adjacent and would help um, align with our, our JJJ uh, initiatives for the future. Mayor, would you like to, to step in here and see if any, add anything? 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think Jim Cross is still on here. Um, I asked him to hang around for this particular resolution to address any of your questions, Jim. Yes, sir, I'm still here and be happy to answer any questions. But the, the gist of it, uh, Mr. Story uh, is going to correct. It's a bill, building that's come available in the last 30 days at the Budget Committee Commissioner. I think the urgent as the comps were in line, they are. It's a 56,000 building. It was identified on the on the report you saw earlier today. It would help us to um, evaluate that building. As you heard Jim say, they were over there today making evaluations on how we can use it. But I've kind of taken the approach down there over the next 20, 25 years that as property becomes available, we need to try to move and capture it because our jails and our juvenile centers and our public safety and the highway department, all that area down there is going to need additional space and, and uh, building space uh, as it becomes available. I'll answer anything specifically. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Uh, Commissioner Alsbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Commissioner Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Uh, Commissioner Lothers, I believe, has left the meeting. Commissioner Lothers. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Commissioner Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. All right, Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. You got 22 yes and a zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-3. Resolution authorizing the issuance, sale, and payment of not to exceed $29,600,000 of county district school bonds of Williamson County, Tennessee, providing for the levy of taxes for the payment of debt service on the bonds and allocating education impact fee collections to defray public improvement expenses. Commissioner Webb? Move for approval. Story second. Commissioner Story, the second uh, budget committee was five four zero against, uh, and I think there was an amendment. Commissioner Webb, there is an amendment. It is in your package. So there's a proposed amendment to the resolution nine dash twenty dash three. Um, unless council says otherwise, it should be in your packet. So I'll make a motion to amend nine twenty dash three with the facts presented uh, as the attachment. Second, Commissioner Lawrence. Any questions on the amendment? The, the amendment is reducing the amount of the, the bond issue. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Alsbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. 
Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester. Yes. Get yes. To it. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Commissioner Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lauders is absent. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22, yes, zero, no. The amendment has passed. Now back to the main resolution. Explanation, please. As you can see, this is a bond issue, and this uh, authorizes the uh, the sale of these bonds, and to be paid for by the educational impact fees um, and the levy of taxes. And I think if there's any specific questions, Phoebe is available to answer them. Seeing no questions, I assume you're ready to vote. Just to call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Aldbrooks. It's absent, I'm sorry. Commissioner Beal. Beal, yes. Commissioner Beathard. Beathard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. He's gone. Oh, he's dead. Commissioner Hudson. Yes. All right, thank you, sir. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Commissioner Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Commissioner Landrum. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Landrum. Little, Landrum. yes. Sorry, Commissioner Landrum. Yes. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. I have 22 yes and zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-4. Resolution authorizing the issuance, sale, and payment of not to exceed 39 million of general obligation public improvement and school bonds of Williamson County, Tennessee, providing for the levy of taxes for the payment of debt service on the bonds and allocating education impact fee collections to defray public improvement expense. Commissioner Webb? Move for approval. Herbert second. Commissioner Herbert the second. Budget committee was 540 against. Explanation, please. Uh, this is a, another series of bonds, as you can see, for 39 million. And again, Ms. Riley is available to answer any specific questions. The list of projects are included in the body of the resolution. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. 
I hello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill? Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard? Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont? Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert? Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester? Herbert. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson? Commissioner Hudson? Commissioner Dwight Jones? Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones? Mr. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum? Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence? Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little? Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers? Sorry. Commissioner Mason? Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton? Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations? Nations, yes. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith? Smith, yes. Commissioner Story? Commissioner Story? Commissioner Sturgeon? Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe? Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb? Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Jeff. Oh, sorry. Commissioner Williams. Okay, Commissioner Story. Yes. All right. Can I apologize, Commissioner Hudson? Yes. Oh, yes, sir. No problem. Thank you, sir. And then Commissioner Williams. So I have 21 yes and one out. Commissioner Williams out. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-5, an initial resolution authorizing the issuance of not to exceed $34,500,000 of general obligation bonds of Williamson County, Tennessee. Commissioner Webb? Move for approval. Herbert, second. Commissioner Herbert, the second budget committee was 5-4-0 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Webb. Uh, this resolution is for the obligation of these uh, GO bonds of 34 million 500. The items are described in the resolution. Again, Ms. Riley is available to answer any specific questions. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Altrooks is absent. Commissioner Beal? Yes. Commissioner Bethard? Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont? Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert? Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester? Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson? Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones? Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones? Ricky Jones. Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum? Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence? Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little? Little, yes. Commissioner Lauders is absent. Commissioner Mason? Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton? Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations? Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey? Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith? Smith, yes. Commissioner Story? Story, yeah. Story, yes. All right, Commissioner Sturgeon? Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe? Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb? Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams? Williams, yes. Thanks, sir. I have 22 yes and zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-6. Resolution authorizing the issuance, sale, and payment of county 
district school refunding bonds of Williamson County and providing for the levy of taxes for the payment of debt service on the bonds. Commissioner Webb. Move for approval. Harbert second. Uh, budget committee was five four zero against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Webb. Uh, these are refunding bonds from the year twenty thirteen, and we estimate we'll save about a million one or more uh, in interest by refunding these bonds at this point with the current interest rates. Again, Ms. Riley is available for any specific questions. Are there any questions? Saying none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Alt Brooks is absent. Commissioner Bill? Yes. Commissioner Bethard? Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont? Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert? Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester? Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson? <laughs> Hudson, yes. All right. Commissioner Dwight Jones? Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22, yes, zero, no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-7, resolution authorizing the issuance, sale, and payment of general obligation school and public improvement refunding bonds and provide for the levy of taxes for the payment of debt service on these bonds. We need to uh, mute some microphones because it's getting a lot of feedback. So if you're on, please mute your microphones. Uh, payment of debt service on those bonds. Commissioner Webb. Move for approval. Herbert second. Budget committee was five four zero against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Webb. Uh, this is another refunding of the November twenty thirteen bonds, and the estimated savings on these is approaching five point two million dollars. Again, Ms. Riley is online. If we have any specific questions, are there any questions on this resolution? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Mr. Allsbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. From yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. All right, 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-8, 
resolution accepting a conditional donation of $1,400,000 from the Friends of Williamson County Animal Control Center on behalf of Williamson County Animal Control to be used towards the construction of a new animal control and adoption center and appropriating and amending the 2020-2021 capital projects budget. Commissioner Story. Motion to approve. Commissioner Webb to second. Property committee was 740 against. Budget committee was 540 against. Explanation, please. Yes, a uh, very generous donation uh, to go towards the construction of our uh, animal control center. Or, yeah. Are there any questions we need to extend a big thank you? We'd like to have more donations like this, but we really need to extend a big thank you to the friends of Weems County Animal Control Center. Uh, are there any questions? Seeing none, call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello? Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill? Bill, yes. Commissioner Beathard? Beathard, Beathard yes. Commissioner Chalfont? Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert? Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester? Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson? Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Yes. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-9. Resolution appropriating and amending the 2020-21 animal control budget by $20,000. Revenues to come from Petco Foundation grant funds. Commissioner Webb. Move for approval. Herbert second. Budget committee was 540 against. Uh, explanation, please, Commissioner Webb. Uh, this is a Petco Foundation grant to use in the uh, Animal Control Spay and Neuter Program. Are there any questions? Another thank you to, to Petco for their, for their donation. Yes. Uh, are there any questions? Seeing none, call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Beathard. Beathard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-15. 
Resolution appropriating and amending the 2020-21 Health Department budget by $20,000. Revenues to come from grant funds. Commissioner Webb. Move for approval. Herbert second. Budget committee was 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Webb. Mr. Chair, this is a grant where uh, we will, the health department will partner with the city of Knowledgeville to develop a sidewalk connecting Sunset Middle and, and uh, elementary schools to Sunset Road. A uh, hats off to Commissioner Lothers for working very hard to get this grant for us. Are there any questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just have a question. Do we have to voice vote all of the grants and donations? Uh, yes, the, the controller's office, I believe it was, uh, Jeff could answer this, yeah. sent out a, a memo. Jeff, you want to answer? Well, you were on the right track. Comptroller's office has uh, given out a memo on uh, guidance as to uh, Executive Order 60 and Electronic 60 and ele Executive Order, I'll start that again. Guidance as to Executive Order 60 and Electronic meetings. <laughs> And it calls for a uh, roll call votes on all votes uh, of a commission meeting electronically. So the answer is yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, are there any other questions? Seeing none, call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Allsbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Need yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22, yes, zero, no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-16. Resolution appropriating and amending the 2020-21 Health Department budget, excuse me, $4,341.58, revenues to come from state grant funds. Commissioner Webb. Move for approval. Herbert, second. <clears throat> budget committee was 440 against. Explanation, please. Uh, this is a grant for child safety seats or other appropriate child restraints with 375344 being carried forward and then the first quarter grant of 58814 from the uh, Tennessee Department of Health. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Voice. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Commissioner Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. 
Commissioner Lothers, is that with the Commissioner? Commissioner Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton? Morton, yes. Commissioner Mason. Mason's yes. Commissioner Rainey? Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith? Smith, yes. Commissioner Story? Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon? Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe? Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb? Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams? Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-17. Resolution amending the 2020-21 Highway Department budget and appropriating up to $211,426.52 for paving expense on Murray Lane, revenues to come from state aid program. Commissioner Webb? Move for approval. Commissioner Ricky Jones, second. Commissioner Ricky Jones, the second. Highway Commission was 540 against. Budget Committee was 440 against. Explanation, please. Uh, this is us accepting the State Street Aid Fund for the uh, Highway Department for resurfacing Murray Lane, which, Mr. Chair, I might say is a finely paved road. I drove on it. And it's a nice, smooth new road. So I appreciate the work. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Beal. Beal, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert? Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester? Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson? Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones? Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones? Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum? Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence? Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little? Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason? Commissioner Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton? Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations? Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey? Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith? Smith, yes. Commissioner Story? Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon? Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe? Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb? Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams? Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolutions 9-20-20. Resolution accepting a conditional donation of $2,500 Country Financial CC Services Incorporated to be used for the purchase of K-9 equipment and appropriating and amending the 2020-21 Williamson County Sheriff's Office budget by $2,500, revenues to come from donations. Commissioner Aiello? Uh, my portion is uh, 540 against. Uh, need uh, to make the, make the motion to approve. Oh, sorry, uh, motion to approve. Herbert second. Thank you. Law, uh, Herbert the second. Law Enforcement and Public Safety Committee was 540 against. The Budget Committee was 540 against. Explanation, please. Commissioner Hello. Yes, this is a uh, resolution to accept $2,500 uh, for the purposes of buying K-9 equipment. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello? Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Beal? Beal, yes. Commissioner Bethard? Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont? Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert? Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester? Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson? <laughs> Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones? Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones? 
Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-22. Resolution appropriating and amending the 2020-21 Williamson County General Sessions DUI Court budget by $58,526.95. Revenues to come from unappropriated county general fund balance. Commissioner Aiello. Move for approval. Story second. Law Enforcement Public Safety Committee was 540 against. Budget Committee was 540 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Allo. Yes, this is a carryover of uh, donations from a prior fiscal year uh, from the DUI Court Foundation of Richard County, uh, just being moved to this uh, budget year. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lauders is absent. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-23. Resolution appropriating and amending the 2020-21 Williamson County General Sessions DUI Court budget by $400,000 for the DUI Court Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Grant. Revenues to come from federal grant funds. Commissioner Aiello. Move for approval. Herbert second. Law Enforcement Public Safety Committee was 540 against. Budget Committee was 540 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Allo. This is acceptance of uh, grant funding for DGY Court. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones. Yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. 
Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Commissioner Williams. Yes. All right, thanks, sir. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-24. Resolution appropriating and amending the 2020-21 Williamson County General Sessions EUI Court budget of $207,766.31 for the DUI Court Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Grant. Revenues to come from rollover federal grant funds. Commissioner Aiello. Move for approval. Story second. Law enforcement public safety was 540 against. Budget committee was 540 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Aiello. This is a request for a carryover of unexpended funds from a prior year for the same purpose. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Uh, call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Shalfont. Commissioner Shalfont. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Pardon me, Hester. Chalfont, yes. Thanks, sir. Commissioner Hester. Uh, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Surgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-25. Resolution appropriating $38,385.77. To the 21st District Recovery Court revenues to come from DUI fines. Commissioner Aiello. Move for approval. Story Herbert second. second. Commissioner Story the second. Law Enforcement Public Safety Committee was 540 against. Budget Committee 540 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Aiello. This is a request uh, to fund the drug court from uh, community court fines. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Beal. Commissioner Beal, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Shalfont. Commissioner Shalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. 
Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason? Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton? Morton, yes. Commissioner Nation? Nation's yes. Commissioner Rainey? Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith? Smith, yes. Commissioner Story? Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon? Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe? Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb? Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams? Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-26. Resolution appropriating $59,174.90 to the 21st District Recovery Court revenues to come from dedicated account. Commissioner Aiello? Move for approval. Herbert, second. Law Enforcement Public Safety Committee is 540 against. Budget Committee was 540 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Aiello. This is a request uh, to fund the drug court fund collection of statutory fees. Are there any questions? Saying none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Move for approval. Oh, sorry, yes. Yes, sir. Commissioner Alfbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, <clears throat> Sturgeon yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-27. Resolution correcting revenue and expense line items previously approved in resolution 7-20-22 as it relates to grant funding for the 2020-21 Juvenile Services Budget. Commissioner Aiello. Move for approval. Herbert. Law Enforcement Public Safety Committee is 540 against. Budget Committee 540 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Aiello. This is just a correction of a uh, line item this entry. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Move for approval. The vote, I'm sorry. Yes. All right, thanks, sir. Commissioner <laughs> Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. 
Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-28. Resolution authorizing the Williams County Mayor to sign a grant contract with the State of Tennessee Commission on Children and Youth and amending the 2020-21 Juvenile Services Budget by $29,183 for a juvenile court grant revenues to come from state grant funds. Commissioner Aiello. Move for approval. Herbert second. Law enforcement public safety was 540 against. Budget committee was 540 against. Explanation please, Commissioner Aiello. This is to authorize uh, uh, the approval of a grant uh, to fund a part-time psychologist for the juvenile courts and then to also fund it from the state grant. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Allsbrooks is absent. Commissioner Beal. Beal, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-29. Resolution appropriating and amending the 2020-21 Juvenile Services Budget by $20,118.32 for a juvenile court grant revenues to come from prior year state grant fund balance. Commissioner Aiello. Move for approval. Herbert second. Law, enfor Law enforcement and public safety was 540 against. Budget committee was 540 against. Explanation please, Commissioner Aiello. This is a carryover of unexpended grant funds from a prior year. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Allsbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky, Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. 
Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-30. Resolution appropriating and amending the 2020-21 Veterans Treatment Courts budget by $27,500. Revenues to come from veteran, veteran treatment court reserves. Commissioner Aiello. Move for approval. Second. Herbert, second. Commissioner Herbert, the second. Law enforcement public safety was 540 against. Budget Committee 540 against. Explanation, please. Uh, this is to amend the veteran court's budget from uh, its own reserves. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Commissioner Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Yes. Commissioner Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-33. Resolution adopting the capital project fund budget for the Williamson County Adequate Facilities Tax, the Williamson County Adequate Facilities Tax, and the Williamson County Education Impact Fee for the 2020-21 fiscal year. Commissioner Webb? Move for approval. Herbert, Second. second. Commissioner Herbert, the second. The budget committee was 540 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Webb. As you can see the detail here, this is the, uh, we are adopting how we're gonna fund the adequate uh, facilities tax. And again, Ms. Riley is here to answer any specific questions. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Mr. Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Sorry about that, having difficulty. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-34.
resolution appropriating and amending the capital projects fund for two million two hundred ninety seven thousand and ten dollars from the county general fund for five hundred eighty three thousand four hundred seventy one proceeds to come from the governor's local government support grant COVID-19. Commissioner Webb. Move for approval. Herbert second. Uh, budget committee was 540 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Webb. Uh, as we know, there are many grants coming down from the state and federal governments regarding the pandemic. Uh, this is an additional $538,471 that the legislature has uh, <clears throat> awarded to Williamson County. The details are provided here. We want to give a special thanks for Governor Lee for providing these grants and our representation with Senator Johnson, Representative Casta, Representative Whitson, and Representative Ogles for their work to get us this extra grant money. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. All right, thank you. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-35. Resolution authorizing the Williams County Mayor to enter into an agreement with the State of Tennessee Office of Secretary of State for a Coronavirus and Relief and Economic Security Act CARES grant and appropriating and amending the 2020-21 library budget for $1,749 revenues to come from CARES grant funds. Commissioner Webb. Move for approval. Harbert second. Library Board was 640 against. Budget Committee was 540 against. There is a typo in the uh, expenditures line. The two dashes should be zeros, and that will be corrected on the final copy. It is just a typo. Uh, explanation, please, Commissioner Webb. Uh, this additional CARES grant through the Secretary of State's office to help local citizens use technology during the pandemic. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill's gonna go yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Salfont. Salfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Absolutely, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. 
Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Go. Uh, Tom Cliff, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22, yes. Zero, no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9 20 36. Resolution appropriating and amending the 2020 2021 library budget by $94,528.71. Revenues to come from donations, contributions, and fines. Commissioner Webb. Move for approval. Herbert, second. Library board was 440 against and two abstentions. Budget committee was 540 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Webb. Uh, as you can see from the resolution, this is money coming from the city of Franklin, along with other donations and fines, and the expenditures are typically for books, as well as gifts and other items in the library's um, 2021 budget. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrook says absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Harbor yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Uh, Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason? Uh, yes. Commissioner Morton? Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations? Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey? Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith? Smith, yes. Commissioner Story? Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon? Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe? Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb? Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams? Williams, yes. 22, yes. Zero, no. Resolution passes. Late filed resolution 9 20 27. Resolution of approving an intercategory transfer within the 2020-2021 general purpose school budget for additional personnel and related expense due to COVID. Uh, I didn't write down who sponsored this. Yeah, I got it, Tommy. Okay, thank you. Uh, motion for approval. Motion. Second. Commissioner Story, the second. Uh, school board was 11-4-0 against. Education committee didn't hear it. Budget committee was five four zero against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Yes, sir. Uh, once again, we're back to worrying about COVID in the school system, trying to make sure that uh, we're able to take care of our uh, expenses within the school system, mainly salaries and wages um, for data processing personnel and such. And I think Leslie's here. If anyone has any, any questions, are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. 
Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, I'm going to go with yes. Commissioner Morton. Commissioner Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. William, yes. 22, yes, zero, no. Resolution passes. Late filed resolution number 9-20-38. Resolution amending the 2020-2021 general purpose school budget for COVID-19 related expense to be partially reimbursed by FEMA funds. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Uh, move for approval. Story second. School board was 11-4-0 against. Education didn't hear it. Uh, budget committee was 5-4-0 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Yeah, we're back to the wonderful COVID subject again, but this time we're looking for some reimbursement for our FEMA fund with FEMA funds. With the school system. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Shalfont. Commissioner Shalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Commissioner Herbert's going to vote yes, so Leslie can get to leave our meeting. Commissioner <laughs> <Esther>. midnight. <laughs> Woohoo! Good night, Leslie. <laughs> Commissioner Hudson. Commissioner Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Commissioner Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, affirmative. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes to FEMA funds. Commissioner Nation. <laughs> Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Commissioner Williams. Okay, so I've got 21 yes and one out. Commissioner Williams, I did not hear. Resolute. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-10. Resolution authorizing the Williams County Mayor to accept a pole barn and mobile home from the city of Franklin currently located at the Williamson County Agricultural Exposition Park. Commissioner Story. So we're in motion to approve. Herbert second. second. Commissioner Herbert the second. Property committee was seven four zero against. Budget committee five four zero against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Story. Yes, yeah, City of Franklin graciously uh, is donating a barn made of poles and a uh, home that is mobile. Um, we appreciate that. Are there any questions? Hearing none, I assume you're ready to vote. You're in, uh, call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Beal. 
Hill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason is a positively yes to the pole barn and mobile home. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Commissioner Williams. So I have 21, yes. Uh, one out, Commissioner Williams. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-11. Resolution authorizing the Williams County Mayor to execute a tower lease agreement with Verizon to construct and operate a telecommunication tower and related equipment. Commissioner Story. Story moved move to approve. Herbert second. Property committee was 740 against. Budget committee was 540 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Story. Yeah, standard lease, uh, land lease uh, for. Um, uh, construction of a of a cell tower for, for Verizon. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Yes to the tower. Commissioner Shalfont. Commissioner Shalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Commissioner Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nation. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22, yes, zero, no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9 20 12. Resolution de declaring certain Williamson County owned property and equipment surplus property and authorizing the sale of the property and equipment. Commissioner Story. Story motion to approve. Herbert second. Property committee was 740 against. Budget committee was 540 against. Commissioner Story. The uh, standard process to um, that's allocated for uh, the sale of, of equipment and whatnot that are no longer needed. Uh, and this, I'm going to call on Bobby for some additional explanation of who's eligible. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick reminder, everyone. Um, 
Generally, county officials and employees are prohibited from purchasing surplus county property unless the property is being sold by auction or a competitive sealed bid. Um, in addition to the general prohibition, we do have some for office specific, such as the county commission. You are subject to the code of ethics, which provides that any personal interest that affects or that would lead a reasonable person to infer that it affects the officials vote on any measure must be disclosed before voting. Be glad to answer any questions. Are there any questions on this one? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Oh, yes. Commissioner Allsbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Commissioner Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Commissioner Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-13. Resolution authorizing the Williams County Mayor to grant a lease agreement to Hillsborough UMC for limited use of open space. Commissioner Story. Story moved to approval. Herbert second. Property committee was seven four zero against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Story. Uh, yeah, just uh, county approval for uh, UMC for uh, limited use for open space owned by the county. Are there any questions? Saying none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Allsbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Commissioner Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-14. Resolution authorizing the county mayor to execute a grant agreement with the state of Tennessee Department of Health for the provision of dental services at the Williamson County Health Department in an amount not to exceed $175,800. Commissioner Webb. Move for approval. Herbert, second. Budget committee was 5440 against. Uh, explanation, please, Commissioner Webb. 
Uh, this is a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to hire a dentist and a dental assistant at the Williamson County Health Department, and it does not require any matching funds. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Osbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Commissioner Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22, yes, zero, no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-19. Resolution authorizing the county mayor to execute a contract between the state of Tennessee Department of Transportation and Williamson County for a trash collection grant for physical year 2020-21. Commissioner Aiello. Move for approval. Story second. second. Commissioner Story, the second. Law Enforcement Public Safety Committee was 540 against. Budget Committee 440 against. Explanation, please. This is the authorized to apply for a grant for litter and trash collection. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Allsbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22, yes, zero, no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-21. Resolution accepting a conditional donation of a Belgian Melanese dog from Brand Farm fan on behalf of the Williams County Sheriff's Department. Commissioner Aiello. Move for approval. Herbert, second. Law enforcement and public safety was 540 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Aiello. Uh, this is to authorize the acceptance of a very generous donation of what I can only assume is an awesome dog uh, for the Sheriff's Department. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Allsbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. For the awesome dog, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard also, yes. 
Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Commissioner Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, yes. Commissioner Morton. Morton, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Commissioner Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22, yes, zero, no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-31. A resolution to reduce the speed limit along Garden Gate Drive and Garden Ridge Drive in Williamson County. Uh, Commissioner Sturgeon. Move, move for approval. Yes. Yes, I'm look, is there a second? Second, Lawrence. Commissioner Lawrence, a second. Uh, Highway Commission was 540 against, Budget Committee 540 against. Explanation, please, Ms. Commissioner Sturgeon. I'm sorry, I missed that. Were you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you or Commissioner Rainey won for an explanation. Yeah, well, uh, Garden Gate has asked to have their speed limit reduced, and they've discussed it with the Highway Department, I believe. and. Um, their HOA is supporting it, so we're putting it forth. Commissioner Rainey, do you have anything to add? I think that that covers it. We're, I'm for it. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Allsbrooks is absent. Commissioner Bill. Bill, yes. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard, yes. Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner yes. Hester. Hester. Hester, yes. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Mr. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mason, this is a tough one, but I think I'm going to go with yes. Commissioner Morton. With a five mile per hour slower, yes. Commissioner Nations. Nations, yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes. Commissioner Sturgeon. Sturgeon, yep. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Tunnicliffe, yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22, yes, zero, no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-20-32. Resolution authorizing the Williams County Mayor to enter into an interlocal agreement with the City of Franklin for the disposal of batteries, oil, paint, antifreeze, and electronics. Commissioner Webb. Move to approve the last item on tonight's agenda. Herbert second the last item. Budget committee was 540 against. Explanation, please. Uh, this is an agreement with the city of Brentwood through state grants. Uh, excuse me, should be city of Franklin. Let me get this correct. City of Franklin, this includes the disposal of batteries, oil paint, antifreeze, and other electronics at their facility in Franklin.
Are there any questions? Seeing none, so you're ready to vote. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Commissioner Aiello. Aiello, yes. Commissioner Altbrooks is absent. Commissioner Beal. Beal, yes. Commissioner Bethard. In recognition of this being the last resolution of the night, Commissioner Brian Bethard votes a very hearty yes. <laughs> Commissioner Chalfont. Commissioner Chalfont, yes. Commissioner Herbert. Herbert, yes. Commissioner Hester. Hester, aye. Commissioner Hudson. Hudson, yes. Commissioner Dwight Jones. Dwight Jones, yes. Commissioner Ricky Jones. Mr. Ricky Jones, yes. Commissioner Landrum. Landrum, yes. Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence, last time, yes. Commissioner Little. Little, yes. Commissioner Lothers is absent. Commissioner Mason. Mason, indubitably, yes. Commissioner Morton. Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Nations. Yes. Commissioner Rainey. Rainey, yes. Commissioner Smith. Smith, yes. Commissioner Story. Story, yes, Mr. Whibby. Commissioner Sturgeon. Yes. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Yes. Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Webb, yes. Commissioner Williams. Williams, yes. 22 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Is there any other business to come before the commission tonight? Motion to adjourn. Second. Plan to move God, second. Third. <laughs> <laughs> With no objection, we are adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you.